Well, of America's most populated cities, the city of Chicago is known as the Windy City, and maybe not for the reasons that you might expect. It's called that because the politicians are full of hot air. We'll see who calls each other's bluffs tonight at the end of 140 laps at Chicagoland Speedway. Not only is it the end of the season, it is the end of the title fight between four competitors, Jake Nichols, Jake Matheson, Michael Curhan, and Connor Horn, all which will be racing against each other to beat each other. The highest finisher wins the title, and it's going to be a fantastic race just outside of the city of Chicago in Joliet, Illinois, just about 45 minutes to the southwest. Kyle Heyer joined by Hunter Sleppy and Finian DeCuna tonight. Finian, welcome aboard. This is, well, not quite my hometown. It's pretty close by, but uh, this is a great uh, racetrack for multi-groove racing. And we've got four drivers that will all have to take four different lines to get the job done tonight. Yeah, we have to see who's going to be who it's going to come down to. He's going to argue that every single driver in this final four is deserving of this championship title. They've been fighting hard all season long, and it all comes down to this one final race here. And we'll see again at the end of 140 laps who will be the one that takes it all. Yeah, after a drastic turn of events last weekend from Auto Club, in which we saw the final four get shuffled a little bit after some appeals and some discussions. Uh, I believe it was Seth Knoll that got kicked out of the championship. Let me go ahead and double check on this. But yes. The championship four order got shuffled around a bit after the misuse of a uh, admin error. So there was an admin error in the race that wasn't just until afterwards uh, between Douglas Dubinging and Michael Cran. And ultimately, there was an EOL that was given to Douglas Dubing instead of Michael Curran, which that drastically changed things. So the championship four now consists of Jake Matheson, Connor Horn, Jake Nichols, and Michael Curran himself. Yeah, coming into the night, uh, I think everyone was kind of keeping score. Of, you know, who's got what? Jake Nichols, one win, 10 top 10s, 12, uh, sorry, 10 top fives, 12 top 10s, 469 laps led. Jake Matheson, six wins, 12 top fives, 13 top 10s, nearly 600 laps led. Uh, Michael Curhan only has 25 laps led. He might be the odd driver out even after all the dramas last week, but uh, tonight they come in, Finian, on equal footing. It doesn't matter what they did up to now. All that matters is what happens in the next 140 laps. Yeah, it's going to be a matter of whoever finishes higher is going to be one that takes the crown. No points, no bonus points involved. It's all just a matter of finishing position. I'll determine what's going to happen here at the end. And first thing we're going to determine position for is qualifying, as qualifying is just now getting underway. Yeah, I was looking at the practice times and the championship four weren't that high on the leaderboard. Jake Nichols, I believe, was down in the mid-teens or right around 20th. And uh, these guys are going to be having a handful tonight. You see the track temp, it's 93. It's not as hot as it was in California, but it's still going to be a little bit slick. And this is kind of like a condensed version of Auto Club, where you still have the multi crew racing, but just on a mile and a half scale rather than a two mile scale. So all season, all playoffs long, we've been following red, green, and yellow in the left side of the screen. And uh, those were signifying whether a driver was set to advance or get knocked out of the playoffs. But with all the advancing and knocking out done and complete, uh, we're all keeping our eye on the blue drivers on the left-hand side of the screen. Those are your Area Cup Series uh, playoff drivers, uh, that the four that are remaining at least. And again, the highest finisher wins it. Been in the past, though. It doesn't matter uh, really where everyone else is running. It just seems like you have to win the race to win the championship. It does not come easy in third, fourth, fifth. I don't think that's going to do it tonight. It never has before. No, it really doesn't. You're going to have to finish extremely well, if not win the race. So you're going to definitely need to be on your A game tonight. Of course, with the way this format is, it all comes down on with so much pressure coming into this event for all these drivers, especially for Jake Nichols looking to get his fourth title. And not only just his fourth title, fourth title in a row. So let's see if he can pull it off here. Jake Matheson, I imagine he's going to put up a very tough fight. A rookie. And try to see if he can be the rookie to take it home. And there you see Michael Curran with the Ensign camera. Hopefully he can add another trophy to this one tonight. And he's referring to the, obviously, the trophy in the back there. But, yeah, he won at Kansas. And I kind of switched his uh, game up a little bit and having to race a little bit more aggressively. And then the uh, kerfluffle from last weekend at Auto Club saw him get moved into the championship four so there's new life on the Fisigas Motorsports team. Good look at Connor Horn he's also plotting his revenge and uh, man he has just come in hot into the playoffs here. The season started 
uh, you know, just kind of a, a drip drip here. Then the faucet and taps just unleashed. And he stole his third win of the year uh, just last week at Auto Club Speedway, getting high at the right time. Jake Matheson won the week before, but notably, uh, the 73 of uh, Jake Nichols hasn't won since Dover, race number five. He's been in the mix all the time, but hasn't won uh, in months. So is he really the underdog there? Even Curhan has, has had a, a more recent victory back around 14 at Kansas. I mean, we really just have to see how it's going to play out, right? You know, uh, who's got the better run here? Who's typically better at the mile and a half? Because, you know, it doesn't matter if you're going to short track road course. It depends on, you know, who's best at these mile and a half. Get David Wise, our dear champion from season one, not in the running for the cup this season. But has a chance of potentially doing well here. I believe he's pretty high up in practice. I'm not doing that wrong. Uh, yeah. I think he was around the top five or so in practice. Yeah, so he's running pretty well. That's pretty decent car. We'll see if we can execute here and qualify. Get that car to the top. You noticed uh, not many cars getting out there and qualifying. Very quiet racetrack. <laughs> For now. Nearly halfway through the session, and I think we're on track to have maybe six drivers complete a lap before the five-minute uh, marker elapses. So it's be interesting to see. As Weiser comes across the line, he will go up to provisional pole. Yeah, so David Weissart has a good history with this track. Uh, he's won here last season in the Trucks and the Pro Series, but he has yet to win a cup race as Spencer Burns goes into the wall there. It was Jake Nichols winning in Season 3, and then Seth Knoll a season ago won from the pole. So something interesting to keep an eye on because of the dynamic racing that we have here at this racetrack. Uh, could see someone like Cameron Hearn have a good shot at dethroning the champions that because you don't really have to win the race to win the championship unless the top two are championship drivers but it's the race within the race Kyle the rest of the guys they're just fine out to end the season on a high note Finney what's our forecast look like because something tells me we're about to lose a degree or two and that's why the racetrack is so empty oh uh, looks like we're about to lose a degree or two in about an hour <laughs> really <laughs> not that many times particularly soon um, that being said, the temperatures are set to decrease, so I think you guys are looking at maybe a tenth of a degree decreasing in the next couple minutes, but it's not much, and, you know, as far as cloud cover, it's, you know, going from clear to partly cloudy in the next 15 or so, it's not even going to be a factor, but I think everyone's waiting, they want the track to cool down as much as possible to get that much more of an advantage. Well, you just saw there, Kyle, he smacked the wall in turn two coming out, and that can kind of uh, throw some people off, especially with that Brant signage over there. That kind of, it breaks out before you get to the safer barrier part of the turn, and right there you see a good angle of it. It can catch some guys off guard because you don't really know how close you're, you are to the wall until you, you're basically right into it like we, we just saw with Cameron Hearn. Yeah, and the other thing to note is uh, the back straightaway. I mean, every time you come here, you got to mention it's curved. And, uh, you know, you'd think that's not a, such a big deal. Okay, just don't hit the fence. But when you're following drivers ahead of you, especially when you're two and three wide, you're just trying to keep the wheel straight. Now, you're not necessarily thinking about the curve in the road. So if you're blinded by cars ahead of you, and you will be tonight with how many cars we're expecting to see on the racetrack, uh, we've got, oh, it looks like over 30. Uh, it, you're going to end up in the wall if you're not paying attention. So keep your eyes peeled and make sure you don't just drive into the fence. As Jake Matheson, one of our championship four, the first of which should get a lap time, is headed off into turn one. One of the first drivers to come, come out in the later part of qualifying here to get a lap time down. A couple more drivers poking their heads out of the ground, just like the groundhog, looking to see yeah. if spring is coming. Looking at Matheson coming across the line. Tyler Nichols, he's come across the line up to the provisional pole. Matheson working his way through three and four, running on the bottom, nice and tight. Little bit of a wiggle as he catches one of the bumps, even wrestling that wheel. And across the start finish line, is it going to be good enough for pole? Ooh, no, he, won't. He, he was shaking his head. No, as soon as he was coming out of turn four, just didn't have the proper three and four that he did in one and two, and throw him off his game a little bit, but. No problem. Got 140 laps to settle this one out. Here's Jacob Bell looking to end the season with a solid performance tonight. Off into turn three. Right up against the outside wall here. Taking a very different line. Seen drivers in qualifying mostly hunting for the bottom lane, not necessarily up on the Ooh. outside. Here he comes out of turn four and across the strike for Jacob Bell. And it's a 30.9, which will put him about sixth spot. And other championship four drivers on track, Jake Nichols and Michael Curhan. Yes, yeah, so everyone's getting on track now because you need at least about a minute and a half to a minute to make a lap in. So 
everyone else trying to get their lap times out there. And the issue when you run it so close to the wire here, if you make a mistake on your own lap, you don't really have a lot of time to reset. So more drivers getting out there. Michael Curry now out on his flying lap, trying to keep it nice, calm, and collected. Sees a chance to get ahead. Oh, he's in the wall. Six, taps the wall, though, and that's going to be it. And you see the dejection there on the face of Michael Curran, and that's the problem with having a one and go or one and done. You mess up on that one, then you, you have to start in the back and work your way up to the front. Jake Nichols comes off turn four. Looks like he's got a pretty good lap time here. Let's see what he does. 179.054. Oh. Pull time for the 73. And here comes Connor Horn just starting his lap. He's going to be the last of the four championship competitors to put a lap time in. He's got a broadcast headset on all tangled up in his. Ooh. Oh, he's in the fence, oh, too. He's in the fence as well. Wow. So two two competitors in the fence. No lap times for them. Um, one driver messing it up. And Jake Nichols looking to be the one wow. to get it right at the moment. And is this a sign of things to come, Hunter? Drivers, championship drivers in the wall out of turn two. Is that going to be our calamity corner tonight? That, that, in my opinion, that will be the trouble spot tonight. Turn four might be an issue, too, although you don't have that brand signage that kind of throws you off your game. Uh, but we will see guys get a little bit too close to that wall in the corner exit of two and four. But turn two more of a concern than turn four. Here's Seth Knoll making his qualifying effort. What could have been? He was in until he wasn't. An appeal overturned his entrance as Conor Okrezic goes to the provisional pole. And Seth Knoll is going to slot himself into third. So had he been in the show, he would have been the second of the championship four qualifiers. But uh, those are what could have, would have, should have. And a lot of cars didn't qualify, uh, not because and they not didn't for try. Lack of trying. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, because they got in the wall, including Cameron Hearn, Ricky Springer, uh, Travis Beckner's in that group as well. So a lot of issues in qualifying here and 140 laps to see how it pans out. Yeah, it's going to be big. A lot of fast cars near the back. Travis Beckner, Michael Curran, Cameron Hearn, James Scioli, Connor Horn, Ricky Springer, all going to be starting from the back part of the field. So it's going to make the race really interesting to see a lot of those quick drivers trying to work their way to the front. Well, race fans, be sure to subscribe to the Area iRacing Twitch channel. As a subscriber, you'll have Area iRacing emotes to use in the chat. You'll also earn double channel points as a subscriber that you can use to redeem for free merchandise all at the price of just $5 a month. That's twitch.tv slash area iRacing. If you're not subscribed, you should be. Uh, again, we're going to go dark for a couple of months, so you want to get alerted that area is back up and running when the next season begins. Make sure to subscribe so that you've got uh, that marked on your calendar for you by twitch.tv slash area iRacing. There's the Chicago L over the bridges here. Nice scenes from Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, because Chicagoland is a little bit uh, drab looking outside of the downtown. So uh, <laughs> there's Joliet. Now, I think off in the distance, uh, maybe not in that shot, but Autobahn Country Club is off in the distance here, uh, which is a racetrack I frequent quite a bit with Grid Life. Uh, it is a kind of a club level uh, gentleman's track that is just around the corner from Chicagoland Speedway. I've never actually been to the Speedway, despite having been here now for four years. NASCAR, bring it back. I keep forgetting you've I mean, been in Chicago almost four years. Yeah, it's getting long in the tooth. I think I'm almost done. <laughs> <laughs> you've been longer in Chicago than you were at Binghamton, I think. Yeah, the and that's getting a up there. good thing, too, probably. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> HelloFresh. Looking to eat healthier in 2024 without having to spend extra money? HelloFresh is here to help. Choose from over 40 calorie smart and protein smart meal options each week. Every meal arrives pre-portioned, so you have less time to prep and more time to enjoy your meal. HelloFresh also gives you free breakfast for life with an active subscription. What are you waiting for? You can click the link to get started with America's number one meal kit today and use the coupon code to save 50% off your first box at twitch.tv slash area iRacing. Put in exclamation point. HelloFresh. All right, how about a starting lineup here? at Chicagoland Speedway as the field gets ready to tango in the Windy City. Let's kick things off. Front row, Connor Okrezic and one of only two drivers from the championship for the set of qualifying time, Jake Nichols starts in second place. Yeah, moving we'll on back, two row number two, really solid one here. I mean, solar flow racing in general doing really good. In the front two rows, Seth Noll in the number one and third. Tyler Nichols next time in the 41 and fourth. David Weishart rolls off fifth in the number 33. Camaro, Ryan Hart's alongside him in sixth in the number three. Justin Bonnerant in the number 11 lineup in seventh place. Next to Matthew Bell in the number nine. He missed out last week from making the final four in the eighth. Ninth place, Greg Mitchell in the number two. No, that's a Ford Mustang. Justin Anasogak rolls off 10th in the 67. Matt Jake Matheson's got a little bit of work cut out for him back from 11th place in the 56. See what he can do. Right slate next to him in the number eight in 12th. 
In 13th place, it's Garrett Grant in the number five, and Jacob Bell rolls off 14th in the number 77. Douglas Newman is going to be lined up in the 71 and 15th place. Next in Bryce Senesak in the 09 in 16th. And 17th place, Dom DeLeo in the number 22. Casey Licata starts 18th in the number 50 Camaro. We've got Dwayne Carverson lined up in 19th in the 81 and running out your top 20. Ed Robertson in the 64. And Spencer Burns starts 21st in the 06. Blaze McKinney 22nd in the 87. Moving on back to 23rd, we start to catch the drivers that did not put a qualifying lap in. Connor Horn in the 42, leading that chart from that field, and James Scott in the next in the 7 in 24th. And 25th place is Michael Curran in the 24, and Ed Sherrod Jr. rolls off alongside him in 26th. Moving on back to 27th, Cameron Hearn in number 4 next to him, Travis Beckner, another driver that just missed out on the final four in the 28 car in 28th. Ricky Springer starts 29th in the number 51, and Skyler Shackelford starts 30th in the number 80. Jeremy Miller lined up in the 30 car in 31st. Next to Mason Kane in the 31 in 32nd. 33rd, bringing up the rear of the field is Ben Pierce in the number 65. Finney, you're beating me in the championship picks. So I suppose I have to go first to give myself any shot. What, what about Hunter? <laughs> Hunter's too far back to have an effect on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, I just to try to be different. Well, I so far this season have picked pretty well, but not as well as Finian. Tonight, though, I think uh, the driver that has, is getting hot at the right time is going to do it. Didn't do well in qualifying, but I think he's going to do it in the race. I'm going to pick that 42 of Connor Horn. I, I don't know. I don't think he's going to win, but I, I, I hope he does. <laughs> Starts I mean, 23rd. Well, I mean, if you're going to pick him, I'm going to pick the easy pick. I mean, come on. He's got six wins this season. He's been one of the most dominant drivers this year. I'm going to pick the 56 of Jake Matheson. <laughs> got a little bit of work to do, but it's only in a, from 11th place. Uh, over in the Twitch chat, I put down Matheson as my pick, but I'm going to have to go by default to Jake Nichols, which, by the way, team championship standing. Solar Flare, 25-point lead over Miller Racing. Lucky Ducks, 84 points back. But unless Solar Flare has a massive collapse here, it's their champ team championship to win. So 140 laps, about an hour and 12 minutes of racing. It's going to be a long night. We're going to see the sun begin to set here as the track cools off. The championship race heats up. Time to go racing one last time in the Area Cup Series. Green flag flies here in Joliet at Chicagoland Speedway. One complete, Jake Nichols leads his first lap of the night. Points don't matter tonight. It's not going to make a difference if he leads one lap or 139. All that matters is who's ahead of the other three at lap 140. Yeah, it's going to be a big thing as far as strategy is concerned, right? It's really excited to see guys, you know, get out there, lead a lap, try to lead a couple laps, and play different strategies. But, you know, you just have to worry about the end of the race thing if you guys really try to play this long term. And we'll see how that plays out. I mean, we'll get Jake Matheson trying to work his way through the field, currently side by side with Justin Osogek in the 67. I think uh, that was Kurt Mitchell that piece of the wall on turn four. I don't know if that was Mitchell or Rafe Slave, eight, who might have bounced off the wall, but one of those red cards up there right in front of the championship four contender Jake Matheson, just a spot shy of that top 10 marker. Uh, just bought around the 11 right in front of him as the Nichols brothers continue to lead away. Oh, far on the wall, and someone was on the apron back. Look. Jacob Bell, I think he's having connectivity problems. Jake Matheson slammed the door on the 67 of Anna Sogak. And the thing about qualifying, you know, down the order a little ways, I don't worry about their pace or anything like that. Obviously, it was wall contact to put them back here. I worry about getting caught up in someone else's mess. And that's where a lot of drivers are right now back here. The four of uh, Cameron Hearn is back in this mix. The 24 of Kerhan is right in the center of it all. You do not want to be in the middle of this one. It's next. It's not Blazing Gaming. I think across 71 of uh, Newbick almost got right in front of the 24. And Curran just kind of slowly but surely move his way up. Got to keep track of that 42. Connor Horn is already moved up five spots up the order. And you know, near the front, recently, Connor Crescent, they're battling for third. Ooh, and now Ryan Hart's trying to get him through. And there's Ray Slate trying to go to second. We'll get second. Great run off turn two. Yeah, he's got a pretty fast car in the short run so far. About to be five laps complete with this. And he's already challenging. 
Championship 4 contender Jake Nichols for the lead. Going to be Gordon Gore off turn 4. Like I said, these guys want to end the season on a high note. It's been a rough year for Rafe Slayton, and he takes the lead on lap time. Yeah, there's a handful of drivers in this field that haven't had great seasons. Ricky Springer is another that I'd expect to be up near the front at some point tonight, just getting one last lap on the field before we, we head to the offseason, and they get to kind of recalibrate here. And uh, it, their break might be long enough that you'll forget if someone wrongs you. So if you've got to take a chance tonight and you're not running for a championship, and neither is the guy next to you, uh, tonight's the night because they'll remember it next season if you do it race one. So uh, get your grievances out of the way now. I think I remember. Good yeah, <laughs> <laughs> chance that it's not, not too terribly long. Ago, so. Ideally, you don't want to make any enemies, but you know when you got a championship on the line, I mean, that an option. Tony Stewart, Tony Stewart that said it best. Uh, he'll wreck his mother for a championship, or his grandmother. I think he'd wreck uh, everybody's well, mother. I was probably wreck both of them. Everybody's <laughs> mother and everybody's grandmother. Oh, oh, right in front of him. That was Dwayne Culberson tapping the wall. He's going to go all the way to the bottom. Connor Horn is looking to go three wide and pass these guys as he continues to work his way towards the front. Yeah, he's up about six spots from where he started, and that was one of those nerve-wracking moments. You don't really plan or don't really want to be involved with anybody's business, but you kind of have to be when you start this far back. Rick Slate is setting sail out front right now, and Weishart has taken second away from Jake Nichols, who is now falling into the clutches of Ryan Hartson beyond. Is there some tire saving already happening in the 73 camp, Vinny? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, we've seen him in the past. He's typically one of the best drivers to do it when it comes to tire saving. Back off early in the stint, you think, oh, I got a leg up on Jake Nichols, and then he comes back about 20 <laughs> laps later and lets his you, and you have nothing left to fight with. And then for Nichols, again, it's all about long term, right? He's ahead. He's got the championship in hand at the moment. Beth is still working through some traffic. So there's no reason to really push the F envelope too much. You see Seth Knoll in the middle of a little, a little pack. Gray Mitchell behind and Matthew Bell then Matheson who's actually just gone around the nine. As Matheson continues to work his way through the top ten, I want to point out Tyler Nichols and is having a pretty good run so far. The paint scheme on his car, it's a throwback to Justin Labonte's paint scheme in 2004 when he won at this race check. So there might be a little bit of superstitions underneath that 41 machine, but he's having a good run so far. Just a little tidbit that I thought I'd point out. Meanwhile, brother Jake Nichols is in front of him, running in fourth, the highest of the championship four. Looking to keep a calm race as the three of hearts looks to just end the season on a high note. It's been a rough season for the three. He's trying to, try to end it inside the top five. And Jake Matheson is coming, though, up three spots, and he's got the one just ahead of him, the two just ahead of him, but the 73 is right out the windshield here. Watch the clearance and the one on the two. That got a little dicey there. But Jake Matheson, what a successful season this has been, Finian. Uh, obliterating everybody in the rookie battle. But I think there's still one race left that he's got to uh, to get the job done in, and it's this one. Oh, yeah, he's already got a $100 check coming his way at the end of the season. So he's guaranteed to leave that, but I'm very definitely won the championship, especially after the season he's had. Came out swinging this year with six wins, his name highest by Nearly double the next driver, Connor Horn with three, and then everyone else with one win apiece. So he's really been one of the best drivers out there this season. Of course, he's got to really prove it now in his final race. Get past a couple more cars, at least for now, to get ahead of Jake Nichols, currently setting up the fourth. Yeah, he's behind the first of defenses from Solar Flare Racing as they run fourth, fifth, and sixth on the racetrack. Meanwhile, still three wide on the front stretch there, back where Bondurant is. He was right in the middle of that. Things seem to calm over going into turn one, but the 11 working on the 09 of Bryce Senesak for the 12th position, trying to work his way back inside the top 10. I wonder if Jake Nichols is feeling like he's got, I don't know, I want to say a handle on things, but he started so much further ahead that he's able to, to really not have to use his tires. He's going to lose some spots here, but he's saving tires while everyone else is on attack mode, Finian. If this race goes green the whole way, I, I suppose it could. He's going to have a big leg up because this first run, if he can get ahead of everyone on strategy, it's going to be hard to undo that later in this race. Definitely can be. And I think there is a solid, very solid chance we go green all the way. One of the last uh, mile and a half we've been to was Kansas, and we went green like the flag there. I don't see the reason why we can't do that here tonight. So we're going to race Slate going around. David Weishart trying to see if he can get through and take the lead away from the 33. Vice versa. 33 takes the lead from the eight and leads his first lap of the race. And Hunter, last time, or I guess the average amount of times 
Uh, sorry, wrong, wrong stat. Last time we were here, two cautions for a total of nine laps. So the chance of going yellow free, very high. Uh, yeah, very high indeed, as there's been quite a few calamities here in the middle of this race. Well, actually, last year it was towards the end of the race, as they're almost four wide in the back there. Robertson all the way on that outside, keeping it close to the wall. But, yeah, there there were a couple of late, I shouldn't say late cautions, because they happened very early on, but it seemed very late because of the time and place during the race, it was during nighttime, but Ooh. during the day so far, as they're looking three wide off turn two there with Garrett Green all the way on the bottom. And Justin Bondurant's kind of like a nucleus of excitement, isn't he? He's been in the middle of three <laughs> wide a couple of times in a row, and, yeah. and a Sogak and Spencer Burns back here as well. He was to the inside of uh, Bryce Senezak and pushed the 0 9 up a little bit in the middle of the corner, and Garrett Green saw oh, there's a good opportunity to go to the inside and try to make a move. Didn't quite get past the 11 just yet. Still in that battle. Take a look at your seven round mark for replay. Take a look at Matthew Bell in the middle of three and four. And Jake Matheson, whoa, almost getting into him as the nine tapped the wall. It was contact there. Oh, oh, Speaking of nucleus of excitement, <laughs> Jake Matheson. It looks like they're pacing back side by side again. Just really fast pace laps at 170 miles an hour going through the turns here. As Matheson still holds control of six and it's actually gone by Tyler Nichols. He's starting to drop towards the back half of the top ten. Uh, still three wide middle of the field there. Is that the 51 of Springer? And then one of the cars middle, Spencer Burns is the car I was looking at. He's going to push up the road into the 11. That's going to get tight out of four, and somehow they do it. And there's Bryce Senesak on the bottom of it all, right, all three wide right now. Able to make it work. Oh, it's still really close side by side, side there. Going to back off each other there. Spencer Burns all the way down on the bottom. Right on board with Bryce Senesak. Oh, as Bonner gets the wall off the turn four. And there's the 24 about the current. It'll break inside the top 15. Going to try and come across the nose of Senesak, and Senesak is going to get a little close there to the 24, but to no avail as Curran will live to see another lap so far. About 20 laps complete here. The 24 is up to 15, Patterson's up to 6. Jake Nichols actually going for third past the 8 of Slate. That's getting just wild back here. Still, oh, push. The 1 and the 8 come together out of turn 2. Banging doors. Yeah, they're fighting hard. Fighting really hard up here. Oh, gonna be some more contact between them as well. Might be no love lost here between these two. Yeah, Slate, the best finish he's had this season was 14th at oh. the Roll Mill, and they're still being in banging here. So yeah. the Roll Mill has a little bit of a beef with the aid of Slate. And right I behind think that them. On purpose too. Right behind them is Jake Matheson, one of the championship fours. He's watching these two tangle. This is a, a bad place to be. If I'm Matheson, I might give them a couple of problems. Because <laughs> they think it's gonna end up right here. Recently, he's backed off of the one, but I can imagine he's very angry over the hood. And I imagine it's going to come back later on in the race. Maybe not now, but, you know, put that in his pocket. Use it later. Put that in the memory bank. I think that's what the, the eight's going to do. But we shall see as there's still over 120 laps left in this race. And look at the 42 of Connor O'Horn. He's kind of stabilized in the 20th position right around there, running 21st at the moment, but making up ground on the high lane. Yeah, he's been up higher than this. He's fallen back down to, to about 20th spot. And now he's making progress forward again, but using a much different lane than he used to get to 17th earlier. So running right up against the high lane, he's got 28 of Travis Spector behind him. And oh, just a total log jam ahead of him. Yeah, I, he was actually ahead of Mike Curran at one point, and then I think about 10 laps uh, fire, they exchanged hands, and Curran went ahead. And Connors has been kind of cruising back here. I guess he feels no pressure, no reason to push. You know, let the car come into its own, let everyone else wear out their tires, and it'll come through later on. Does it feel pressure still with uh, more than a, a little under 120 laps left to go? They're still working their way two wide and three wide, and on the run have a little bit of a moment there, almost slid up on the racetrack, but Weiser continues to lead away at his best cup finish of the season just last week at Auto Club, finished fifth. So he's looking to keep that momentum rolling and end it on the high note, possibly with the win, but oh boy, they're still looking three deep back there with Senesak. Yeah, it's getting pretty dicey out of turn two. I'm just watching this eight because the contact with the one kind of put a gash in his side, so he's got oh. his hand over that wound. And oh, Jake Matheson, 
dropping yeah. down the order, Finian. Internet issues for the 56. Oh, that might be it. His quality is dropping down through the hole. And I don't see him coming back at this point. His quality is continuing to drop. I'm waiting for the official message that he's been disconnected. Zoom's out, too. How frustrating would it be oh, to be taken out of a championship fight by something entirely out of your control? I feel gutted for him to be in this position. Well, that happened last week in the Pro Series to, uh, oh. to one of the drivers, Shane Tyrion. Gosh. And he's dropped out of the call. I imagine only moments until he'll show it on iRacing as well. That is catastrophic. So frustrating, Finian. I don't know that there's any words to describe what he's feeling right now, other than oh, chaos up oh. towards the front. Rafe Slate and the two of Greg Mitchell, and this is just, uh, wow. They were four wide. Nuclear They're to nuclear. nuclear. Look out. Here comes the 0-6 to the bottom. Who set the fuse off on this fight? Oh, this is all happening right in front of Connor Horn. He is right in the middle of it. Do not want to be. I think a couple drivers missed the corner and it's just all kicked off here. They're going to go forward again. Beckner backing out of it. Almost got squeezed between Cameron Hearn and Ray Slate. He backed out of it in line. Now Connor Hoare working to the outside of the 28. Trying to find some semblance of normalcy as they hit sideways off the corner. Ray Slate almost got turned by the 28. Horn almost into the wall and almost into the 8 of Slate as he continues to drop throughout the field. Boy, you're looking almost full wide right there with Connor Horn. He's going to scoop by just barely, and these guys still haven't calmed down behind him. Gosh, that was a huge risk for Connor to go through there, but he made up a bunch of spots. Remember, he was 20th a couple laps ago, up to 14th place now. As 28 of Beckner jams his car down the inside of the eight, and that, like I told you, Rafe Slade, he is bleeding and just trying to stop the bleeding now as he comes off a turn. Two cars bouncing off each other back there. Scaioli, uh, zeros nine, a Senesac, and more. Yeah, I really wonder what just happened in the last couple laps and everything kicked off. Everyone's fighting extremely hard down for the position. Ooh, that was a little bit caught between Ed Chair Jr. and Bryce Sozak for a second. Still someone in the middle three wide. Not completely clear of drivers on either flank. Looking at David Weiser back up near the front. Ryan Hart's on putting him under attack. Meanwhile, the top three have just checked out. There's almost a two-second gap separating the top three from fourth place Seth Knoll. As Hartz takes the lead and the slide up in front of the 33. Here comes Jake Nichols. Strong run off turn four. Going to look at second. The Lies are going to give the three a big shove down the front stretch and into turn one. Yeah, so Jake Matheson is out, and that will yeah, end his chances for a championship. And just to summarize his season, as you pointed out earlier, Finian, double the wins of the next best driver of Connor Horn. Six wins for Matheson, 12 top fives in 17 races, and 13 top tens led nearly 600 laps with an average finish of eighth place. What a oh, se caution. season it has been as Rafe Slate. There goes the boom you were expecting. Their first caution, lap number 31. Yeah, not where I was expecting it to happen. Especially because I thought Ray Slate was a little bit higher up than he was actually running him, but got shuffled down the order. And coming out of turn two, we talked about turn two being potentially climbing the corner. It was actually technically going back. Who? Ricky Springer. Oh. That's me. Yeah, I was going to say that. Didn't pan out the way I thought it was going to. Trying to find a gap and they just have big enough momentum. Miscommunication there that goes off the nose of the 88. Doesn't hit anything, I don't think, so got away with it. And that will be an EOL penalty for the 51 of Ricky Springer. And Pit Road going to be a very busy place. Everyone going to come down and get tires and fuel. Can't imagine any special, uh, uh, what would you call it, strategies? I don't think we're going to see anyone take two tires. No. Uh, yeah. Fall off was about Unless two seconds from the wow. beginning of the run to the end. Look like Bristol. <laughs> yeah, again, this is kind of abnormal for this car, though. We've only seen this kind of fall off at a few tracks on the schedule. So that strategy will, will factor in as cars are rolling off pit lane, and Casey Licatis drove right through. I'm sure we'll see him back. Ooh. Jake Nichols oh. wins the race off pit him. lane. No, he does not. The three gets it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did get it, actually. That was extremely close.
Oh, I thought he... That was weird. How? I knew my eyes weren't deceiving me. How does that happen? <laughs> I uh, don't know. He was never ahead of him. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't even make any yeah. sense. <laughs> I think Nichols is going to demand a recount. Uh, Jacob Bell is still throwing his hands in the air over season four. <laughs> yeah, what line is the line? Because he's not ahead of him anywhere. <laughs> not any line. What line is the line? None of the above. I don't know, man. That, I mean, that, I know the, the, the caution at the end of the race rules are nebulous, but I've never seen that happen before. It was the imaginary line in turn two. <laughs> okay, oh, Slicotis can come back in. Interesting. Probably going to weigh another lap. Well, uh, oh, wait. Oh, yeah, no, he passed through. So I guess he could come back in the next lap. Um, but I guess uh, while we're under caution, here's a little bit of an interesting statistic. Um, so out of the four seasons we previously had, of course, Nichols winning three of them, uh, every championship that Nichols has won has been from a uh, first place position. He's not finished second in any championship he's won, so if he wants to take it home, it's going to probably be from P1, statistically speaking. Weishart took the championship from second place, and that was with our own Eric Weinland winning that race. So the championship sure, winner has not finished lower than second place in the final race. I uh, asked race control, what do they think happened down there in pit lane? And race control says, I racing be I racing, my man. Yeah, that's the best <laughs> answer for I don't know how this game works, kind of dude. Stuff. I yeah, don't... they're timing. This game, I racing has some weird timing like, shenanigans. I... I, I, feel like, I feel like at this point we can make a compli uh, comp uh, the compilation. compilation. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Of the, all the timing issues you have yes, with Iris. Yes, but the, the thing is, like the again, the caution at the end of the race, like I can, there is a moment when I can say that car was ahead. I don't mean to get hung up on this because it's pretty inconsequential, but I just think it's really <laughs> weird. Hey, you say it's inconsequ un inconsequential, it could be very much a factor here tonight. You never know. Well, yeah, I mean, imagine this was the last restart. I mean, that's, I again, I, there was no place where the three was ahead at all on pit lane other than when he passed him to get into the pit box. So, I mean, I, I, I'm just I think the every number, day I, think I learn. The number three team is paying off the officials. I just learn more and more about how backwards some of the scoring can be. But I mean, I, you could have shown me that a hundred times, and every single time I'd say that the whatever. Again, I don't want to get hung up on it. I just think it's weird. <laughs> Anyway, the three is your leader. He's going to line up on the outside with another Chevrolet giving him a push, and that puts Jake Nichols and Seth Knoll together. I'm a bit surprised that the three didn't elect for the bottom just to prevent those two from being nose and tail. I guess not. I guess he fears he, or feels that he'd rather take the high lane and work with that and see how it plays out there coming to the restart. Jamie Jake Fetters second, uh, and then we've got, where is... Seventh. Oh, there he is. I thought he was lower than that, so up in... 7th, 8th position, and then Connor Horn much further down the order, so he's got some work to do. And Jake Matheson is not going to attempt to rejoin. Understand that. It's a frustrating way to go. Ray Slade is on a mission up top. He's pulling the Kyle Busch maneuver around the outside here, and uh, wants some spots back as we go back underway here, lap 35. Up to go into turn one. Ray Slade, like you mentioned, going to rock it around the outside. Whoa! He goes three wide, actually splitting the middle with uh, Connor Horn. We'll go around the other side and we'll fall back into 24th up ahead of them. White Arts Matthew Bell. So that outside lane got a fantastic start. Nichols back to fourth. Here we go through the front stretch once more. Brother Tyler Nichols in the third just in front of him. Meanwhile, Krezik started on the pole, working his way back inside the top five. Blinking though while doing so. Spencer Burns now entering the picture inside the top five. Where did he come from? Like there you go, run. Whoa, Michael Curran into the wall off turn two. Just like everyone to know that I have three markers in my bookmarks bar for this race, and all three of them are race late. <laughs> 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 the, the contact he had with the one, the crash, and then the restart, <laughs> all marked in case we have to go back and look at it later. He's been Mr. Excitement tonight. Oh, he said the nucleus of excitement. And, uh, and, and, and we're only 30 laps in, so. Well, many more bookmarks to come, is what that means. <laughs> Yeah, so what I was uh, what I was about to say. Uh, oh, over the wall where? hard. Sorry, uh, seventy. That's a thirty-one. A cane bounced off yeah. the wall hard. Sorry, Hunter. Go ahead. 
I was going to say, we were, we were right around the window of the last caution in, in the Chicago Wing race. Season 3 was with 101 to go. Season 4, 104 to go. This caution, as we see Kane bounce off the wall, happened with 110 laps to go. Interesting. So we, we could very well go green. I've been pretty aggressive, though. Look at Scioli and oh, boy. Gosh, I'm not even looking at that. Doug Newbigg almost oh, got into the corner yeah. panel of Gary Grant. Yeah, he almost oh, turned it back there. The wall. This is getting very sketchy in this battle. And these guys back here are fighting uh, for what? 17th, 16th position. It's really cutthroat. Oh, Newbigg almost turned again, Grant again. I am going to come here for a couple of laps. Oppenheimer in here setting the fuse off with it. This is nuclear. I like that word tonight. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> One of the first nuclear reactors is actually built in uh, Chicago University. Oh, there you go. It's in the underground. Oh. Here comes 71 and Newbigging up the inside of Bryce Senesek. That's for 17th place, as you guys pointed out. And all the while up front, it's still Hearts, Bell, Nichols, Nichols. Yeah, very much single file up near the front compared to this chaotic mess back here <laughs> down around 20th position. Doug Newbig and going to the inside of Garrett Grant. I wish with the five, you know, did something wrong. 71's been making some aggressive charges to the back of him. He's got something on his quarter panel that's drawing him closer and closer to that left rear quarter panel there on the five as Scioli goes all the way up on the outside, three wide. Well, for a moment, now side by side with Travis Becker. 100 laps to go. And it feels like things are just getting started here. Still door to door, about 18th on back. All the while, here comes Tyler Nichols in that 41. He's had a really nice run today, Good, has pace in that uh, Toyota as well. Here he comes to the inside of Matthew Bell. And trying to make the 41 car work up here in the front if he can you know, get some laps left. Got some two pretty decent cars to get past Matthew Bell and Ryan Hart. We talked before about Ryan Hart's uh, struggle this season at the front. He can take a win home tonight. That turned out to be a great, uh, great case of momentum going into season. Yeah, Tyler Nichols had his best finish of the season a couple weeks back. Uh, well, actually, last week at Auto Club with an eighth, but he had a tenth at Kansas as well. So, good on the mile and a half, and a good, strong run trying to finish on a high note with possibly his first top five of the season. Meanwhile, Senesak still back here around the 15th position, battling with Don DeLeo. Then you got Reef Slate still trying to work his way through. All the while, up there, three wide on the outside is Connor Horn in the 42 still trying to make his way through. His progress has been pretty slow tonight, I'll, I'll say. Uh, been kind of trapped back here, and it's not looking good as far as race pace is concerned. If he could get clear of this battle, maybe something would be different, but he's been kind of tied to this big group. And when they're racing like this, Finney, it's just hard to find an advantage and get ahead. Really is, at this point, just a matter of surviving back here, right? You're just trying to pick a lane, got to hope it's six, hope nothing goes wrong. Uh, you do ideally want to move forward a little bit, but uh, sometimes it just gets too dicey. And, you know, depending on the choice you make, you might have to back out and let things ride out. There's the one goes on. Let's move on back from Ryan Hart to Matthew Bell and company. And going orderly here near the front. Uh, it's kind of, I guess, taking off the lap. Not a whole lot of big moves in the last couple laps. Can you document why the 33 is back here? Uh, no, I don't know. I will investigate. Likely a pit lane penalty, if I had to guess. Uh, looks like it. I oh, can't yeah. imagine that we're going to go green to the end here. The cars are not really separating. I mean, if we can get maybe another 20, 30 laps, maybe we could separate enough. But there's just so many packs of drivers making compromising maneuvers on each other that I don't think we can get another 95 without another collision. Uh, following up on the David Weisart news, so he tried to drag race the number one and Seth Noll out of pit lane, who uh, sped by about three to four miles an hour. Well, if I learn anything, you don't you beat the guy off pit lane, beat him off pit lane. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually very close. They're like almost the exact same formation as the three and nine, so they got it right there. <laughs> Tonya Beckner also has it move forward a lot. That's why I don't think it's necessarily the pace, but just the conditions. They've been just kind of trapped. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm curious what the game plan is for Connor here. He's just trying to ride it out back here, make some slow progress forward. As he made some decent progress forward, and he's kind of drifting back on this run. I'm wondering if he's just trying to play the long game here with the tires. Don't want to be too patient with them because they're near and halfway, and some drivers they start to think a little bit, oh, and that was a big moment for him. Roberts in the 64, but some drivers tend to think, okay, well, I'm not where I want to be halfway through. I got to push a little bit harder. Let's look on the Sim Rat Market replay with the 64. Just got the apron there. Yeah, no contact from anybody else. Just had a big bobble and a wiggle and gathered it up, but that was a sketchy moment. Just from Bonner and running in the middle of the field, running pretty well, just outside the top 10, side by side with Greg Mitchell, who's on the bottom. And the 11, we're going through. And Ray Slate is back in on the As they continue to make progress, we're actually side by side, or they were for a moment. Jake Nicholas Whoa, and Michael Whoa, Justin Sogak sideways, oh sideways as they're, after making contact with Spencer Burke. He's going to save it, drop back a couple spots. Oh, look There's out. still that Slate and Mitchell in the two red cars just trying to make it through with the 67 of Anna Sogak. Your Sim Rep Market replay presented by Rick Sonsons. See if the 67 has some contact that leads to this. Kind of, oh, yeah, with the 06. Was a nice job. And then as they go off into the corner, watch the two here. He's going to cheat up the track here to watch out for the 67 and a little bit of contact between those two. Might be the spiciest replay of the night. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got a lot, long way to go. Oh, up ahead, Cameron and Hearn, Connor and Prezik door each other on the front straightaway. Whoa. Oh, yeah, look out! Done yet? Oh. oh! There they go. My gosh, Dom the Leo was right in the middle of that, too. Rafe Slake oh, in the front. They're in the wall! This is not going to end well. I don't know how they haven't already crashed. That was just stupidity right there. I mean, going into turn one and being that reckless with each other. I mean, you, Connor Horns, again, right in the middle of all this somehow. That could have taken him out of the race. Yeah, we'll go back and look at that again. But there was a lot of cars bouncing off each other. I don't think we're out of the woods yet. I bookmarked it for later when things calm down a bit. If you're going to hit, do it on the straightaway. Don't do it right before corner entry. That was almost a big one. Ways McKinney got nose chopped there. And Connor Kreisig has retired from the race. He got a meatball flag after all that contact. So he's calling in tonight down the 31 driver's line. It's a turn out of turn four, actually. There's the main contact. On both sides of the story here. Poor Dovid in, washed up into the 14. Touch fenders a little bit more down the front straight away. I can't tell the 14 went down on the 22, or the 22 no. came up and the 14 opened. I don't know. Both. I think the 14 went down a little bit more than the 22. Yeah, the 14 kind of turns in. And then and the, the 8 drives in here up. and throttles up right into the 22. Yeah, because they, they and the 14 are teammates, that's why. And then ah. accidentally put his own team in the wall. Oh, caution out as we were looking at the replay for that. Don't know. I see Senesac's way back here, but I don't think he's my caution car, is he? He is. Oh, boy. There he is on the back straightaway. Here's how it started. 67 on the oh, contact with Beckner, and then just ping pong in there a little bit. Honestly, that's a pretty calm crash, all things considered. Yeah, did a great job locking it down. Yeah, just everyone just got kind of squeezed here. I don't know that anyone in particular is at fault. If anything, he, he comes off the wall like two feet. That was enough to kind of trigger the, yell, the caution, but... Huh. Second caution of the night, and pit stops again. These guys are going to need some cooler tires. It's getting spicy out there on the racetrack. Ooh, I'll tell you. <laughs> Jig Nichols is going to add a, a one-foot extender to that front bumper <laughs> so he can beat the three off pit road this time. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of curious to see how this pans out. 
There's the three. There's the 73. Similar scenario. Well, that time it was clear. Or a start. Well, yeah, yeah, need, a, need a more than a foot. <laughs> so, fourth coming in, so back out fourth in line. So here, riddle me this. So last time, yes. the 73 lost the race off pit road to the three. In the same way that the 41 beats him this time. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, we've had our fair share of Sim Rat Market replays so far tonight. Race fans, head over to SimRatMarket.com for custom iRacing paint scheme templates that are simple and easy to use, so it keeps you more focused on the racetrack. So, guys, I wanted to point out, while Connor Horn is uh, struggling a little bit to move forward, uh, the driver that started near the back with him, Michael Curhan, has not. He's going to restart seventh right behind Jake Nichols. Now, the last couple of times they have battled, any of that 24 did win one of those battles back at Kansas. And, uh, Which is a mile and a half. Yeah, and they did the same battle at uh, Iowa, but Jake Matheson was the one to win that. But we should mention that Curhan outdrove Jake at Kansas in a very similar racetrack. I mean, the layouts of these places are almost identical. Mm -hmm. So maybe this 24, none of us picked him, but no. none of us have picked him in the past either, and he just manages to surprise us. Like a couple seasons ago, he scraped into the, the final four because of a crash at the end of the Fontana race leading into the finale. Yep. And he went on to uh, win the championship, didn't he? Exactly, he did. So, I mean, you know, it's very much possible you can get a lucky break here, especially now with the track position to work with something here near the front. And where did, uh... oh, never mind, sorry. I thought, I thought I lost Jake Nichols on my timing. I was looking directly at him. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so Jake lined up in fifth, current in seventh. And then the real outlier out of all this is Connor Horn back in 18th. And we're talking about how, you know, time's starting to run out. We are quickly approaching halfway, just about 14 laps from it. And so at some point, God is really going to have to make that big step and really bring us out of the top 10, because I don't think he's been higher than, I think, maybe 15th? No. <laughs> we're still debating the uh, how iRacing chooses who wins the race off pit lane. Race control suggests maybe iRacing closes his eyes and throws a dart at the board. Best theory I got right now. Well, you, <laughs> you, you, like asked, you asked how iRacing does it, not how NASCAR does it. I think NASCAR does the same thing with cautions because I, I saw <laughs> from uh, uh, who, who's who's Bubba's spotter? Was it Freddie Kraft? I think it's Freddie Kraft. There you. was a there was a video on Twitter of Hosevar just limping around the racetrack for a lap with a cut down tire and somehow that wasn't a caution it was towards the end of the race too uh but looking at the in-car replay of it he's in the wall and he's just in the middle of the racetrack trying to get to the bottom and he's going like 50 miles an hour slower than well you know what would help now it wasn't a caution you know what would help hunters if you painted number nine on the side i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i'm just kidding don't hurt me i'm just kidding <laughs> all right coming to the restart lap 58 and championships on the line. Could we rehash Curhan's previous championship where he snuck through and stole one in the last two rounds? He snuck through in a very similar way, actually in a more dramatic way, in a post-race appeal. Green flag and already some dramas back here. Three wide with DeLeo. Yeah, already fanning out DeLeo up on top. Three wide, not quite getting up to speed. It's going to be the one that Seth Nolan will sneak on through. Oh, a bump from behind, Solid Rock versus Physique. Is this going to get dicey here? Race lead all over the back of the number four machine. Yeah, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with what transpired a handful of laps ago, but he's still all over the bumper of Hearn. Going to be four wide in the middle of the turn. That's Newbigging right next to the eight. It's going to get tied on corner exit. Oh, there they go. They're still being a thing. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. That's the caution. Oh, someone's going to go up the hill. Big that. way, oh. huge crash. Oh. Nah, they got to park him for that. That's ridiculous. And another crash, this time a bigger one. Dwayne Culberson destroyed. I, I don't know if you parked the four or the A, but so someone's got to get parked from that. That was just absolutely ridiculous. I right, start with both of them. Let's have to take another look at it. I, didn't, I was trying to grab Connor's camera, so I wasn't even watching the track as it was happening. It's something crazy. Well, I saw it was happening. That's why I wanted to get Connor's camera, just in case he got caught in it. But 
four wide. He actually did almost get caught into it. He very much could have been the wall. It's a sandwich. You know, I think at the end there is where it gets bad. I mean, the 17 is kind of what triggered the whole thing to start. But I think at the very end, uh, you have to look at it in context. Well, right? the thing is, the thing is, like up until like just about the start finish line, it could be like, you know, okay, the uh, eight and the four trying to unhook each other. And he should have backed out. That. And it's then, like, and then yeah. after they came across the line, they got separated, and then he still went after the four. Yeah, let's yeah, watch this uh, again slower and uh, take another look at it. Because I don't think her knows that the seventeen is next to the eight. No. No, so you see right here, okay, he's trying, you can argue he's trying to save it, he's trying to save it, not really, but they get separated, and then finally he goes back for a final hit, upsets his oh, car. I didn't even see the 30 and the 88 get tagged in this. Yeah, I didn't see that either. <laughs> yeah, the 88 was, he came across down someone's nose and got oh, sideways. Oh, and then Dwayne Culverson. Oh. oh, man, that's a hard hit. And that's what stinks, is you get drivers like that involved that didn't do anything. And Miller and uh, Shackelford got caught up together. Before come across 64 of Robertson. Yeah. Uh, sure yeah. I think he saw what was happening at Oh, oh my god, that third yeah. hit. Yeah, it took out his teammate as well. Doesn't it? Four run for 609 there. Getting involved in that caution. But David 609 Weissart. in a 404 error. I mean I think what will be telling, and we can jump on board here, is the steering of both these cars. Because I bet one was turning right, one was turning left. So it does look like it's actually being viewed as two separate instances. I think technically the Shackleford wreck was what caused the car. Hearn wasn't doing himself any favors there. Man, I, I mean, I don't want to be the one making the calls, but I just know that was ugly. So, Scholar Shackelford was given the EOL for that. Yeah, because I think he was te the technical cause of the caution. Yeah. yeah. Then they they were looking into the, the Ada Slate and the 4 for and in my opinion, need to park both of them, because this is the second time they've had a run-in within the last 10, 15 laps or so. And it took out another innocent yeah, driver that, in Dwayne Culver. For, for me, that's the thing. Like, if you're going to junk each other, that's one thing. Uh, obviously, it has an impact on the race flow, and, and that stinks. But, uh, you know, it's a little bit more forgivable if you just take each other out. But as soon as you start involving other cars, uh, it, it starts to step beyond the lines of uh, boys have at it, right? So uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. But, I mean, I did say that <laughs> everyone's got a couple months to cool off. So maybe they're taking that too too much to heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Everyone's just laying it all out there, it seems. <laughs> Right before the season ends? Yeah. Does it change the... Well, it did bring Jake and, and Michael a little bit closer again. I'll tell you, this is 24. Underdog every time he shows up here. But with his history, maybe we shouldn't have considered him an underdog. Yeah, last time we were on a mile and a half, 24 got the best of the 73. That big old trophy in the background, too, Finian. Oh, yeah. And getting an update from race control, looks like they're saying that there's a lot of neck code involved in that incident, so they're not able to determine particular fault for that, but both drivers are going to be under a lens, basically, the rest of the race. Uh, Rafe's out, so... So Cameron's going to be under a <laughs> microscope for <laughs> well, the rest of the race. Yeah. Well, that eight, the 8 was uh, getting into it with a whole bunch of people. I mean, he'd probably been on the receiving end of some things, too, not pointing a finger at him, but I think it was kind of inevitable. Anyway, we'll double up for the restart. Matthew Bell is your leader. Ryan Hartz will be, actually, I think it's Bell uh, in second. Hartz has the top spot here. We'll give it a restart and see how it goes. It's Tyler Nichols and Spencer Burns. That 6 having a really nice day up here. You know, we've uh, talked about Tyler, but this... 06 started 21st. Yeah, it's interesting that this car just kind of came came out of nowhere, and then he's gotten to the front, and it's pretty much stayed there. The car does look competitive. you see if he's got anything left, you know, for the leaders up here trying to really take it home. Coming to the restart, lap 64, nearing the halfway point. 
and there's been enough drama for an entire race, but none of it other than the 56 lagging out has been with the championship four. Now the championship three is even Hartz is having issues with internet. Green flag, lap 64. Wow, close quarters Ooh. there between the one and the two. They've had this uh, situation a couple of times tonight where they've cleared each other with inches to spare. Here's James Scioli. They haven't really mentioned the seven a lot tonight. Whoa. Look at McKinney rocking around the outside. Whoa. Where you run off the corner, and I think that's where we're seeing with Seth Goldman being aggressive with the top side. That's the lane you kind of want to be to really carry that run, especially early on in the restart. Boy, Kenny looked like he chugged a full Celsius under that last yell because he is just out the get-go. I'm like you, Finney, and he just shot out of a cannon on that high lane of lap ago in three and four, just running the outside lane into turn three and four. This time by going to try and fit it in the middle, but going to get tucked in line beneath the two of Greg Mitchell. Out of turn four, five laps to halfway, and the front of the field, as they have done so many times tonight, is sorted. Behind them, still lots of tangling here. Still surprised that 42 just cannot seem to get up and go on these short runs. Maybe it's being cautious. It's, he hasn't gotten involved in a wreck yet tonight, Finian, but at some point he'll have to show the pace. But he's still got over half the race, and he is making progress now just slowly. Yeah, slow and steady progress near the front. Also, you got to know is that on the restart, Michael Curry took the lead came in the championship running, at least, away from Jake Nichols. He's ahead of him in third. Nichols then right behind him. Oh, look out. Oh, oh, Mason Kane, look out, Connor Horde, championship contender in the wall. Kosh is going to come out. Connor Horde's championship hopes are up in smoke. And that's it. Right before mentioning it, how it, he, he was not making enough progress, was still in the danger zone there. But his luck had to run out at some point. I mean, he was just right in the middle of so much carnage that almost happened. It, it, the bubble had to burst at some point. It just burst at the wrong time. 31 of Mason Kane was the other car in it. Blaze McKinney. Let's put some three wide here. And Mason bounces off the 87 up the hill and tags the seven in the process as well. And the 22 got in it. Down to the game, swept up there in the end. Really unfortunate for Connor Horn. Now just starting to work his way up near the front. Nowhere for him to go. And now our two winningest drivers are out of the race and probably out of the race. I mean, Nine realistically, he could, get, he could get that car repaired, but I think you're yeah. wondering at what point, what's the point of this? You almost stay in it because of the potential for it to go south for everyone else, but nine wins between himself and Jake Matheson, and unless a uh, little racing miracle happens, the championship will go to one of two drivers who only have one win apiece. Interesting how that plays out, right? <laughs> Man. Yeah. I mean, one of them has got a lot more championships than the other, but when it comes to winning races, that's how you get the job done. And uh, neither of them have done that multiple times this season. 31 was this before the uh, EOL for that one, so Mason Kane will start at the back of the restart, but I think that car is also pretty tore up. Well, there goes my championship. <laughs> also, commentator hopes. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I'm really <laughs> sad that Connor wrecked out, but yeah, happy to win because commentator championship to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, you, you picked Jake Nichols, didn't you? No, I picked Jake Matheson. Oh, oh I, no, I picked Jake Nichols. I'm, I'm, I'm confusing myself because in the chat I put Jake Matheson, so I guess by default I chose Jake Nichols for the championship. Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, I, I suppose that Connor keeps rolling and a bunch of other cars DOL. I suppose I still could win. I would say it, it's not all over yet for the 42, <laughs> unless if, if the 24 and 73 somehow get into a crash and they're both no, done. Connor is back out on the track. So uh, yeah, she has less of damage <laughs> yeah, than I thought he did. I mean, that's a low bar. <laughs> the car is not going to be. Well, he's going to remain on the lead lap, so I believe for now. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm one to look for a silver lining, but. 
Yeah, not, not looking great. Again, I, I wouldn't give up because the potential for the front two to get involved oh, yes. in something is very high. But and, the way uh, this race is going, yes. I mean, two of them are eliminated, and we are about to cross halfway. So two of the two, two of the four out by la halfway. Maybe the other two will be out by lap 140. Definitely shot. I mean, considering so much is on the line. Michael Curran, he's got a very competitive car. So it is a 73. What are you willing to do to win a championship? Yeah, I I can't see these guys beating and banging for a championship, although that, that sounds absurd for me to say out loud. But these two raced each other with respect at Kansas. They had a little bit of door banging, but that was coming to the finish. We might see that if it remains the same right now. But... These two have a lot of mutual respect for each other because that could have gone a lot of ways in Kansas and ended in the most, uh, well, I shouldn't say controversial. We did have a photo finish, but in the most cleanest way possible. Wholesome. It was wholesome. Those yes. two raced each other door to door, lap after lap, never even touched. And when it came down, push versus shove, they didn't. And I think that was the cool part about that. And I think it also goes to show, and this is for the Calamity fans, that you can have a great race without leaning on each other. Uh, I think that's that's the best way to do it. Well, <laughs> that, yeah, that's the I only mean, thing that's different, though, right? Because you know you got a, right, well, a singular race win versus a championship, and I, I kind of agree. I don't think they're going to be you know die bombing each other, you know, dump each other for the, for the win. I do think they, there's definitely a chance they're going to get a lot more physical, though. Yeah, we'll see. Because you know, for you can argue for Jake Nichols, he's got one of the best cars in this league, you know, almost every single season. Michael Kerr, and he's pretty good. He can collect a couple wins, but, you know, for a championship, might not be there every single time. There's one of it, and he's only got to fight now the 73 realistically, right? So wh at what point in time, you know, where, when is it going to be as good as it's going to be now when you got almost an equally competitive card of the 73? And the championship, you're staring right at it. We were asked in the chat if it is a full moon, and Finian had just looked this up. It's a waxing No, it's a waxing gibbous. gibbous. <laughs> We looked at this beforehand. <laughs> yes. I asked, uh, why are they waxing the kid from my Carly? <laughs> and we had a whole conversation about how creepy Nickelodeon was in the <laughs> 2000s. Yeah, that's not safe for YouTube. <laughs> no, you can Google that on your own time. Time to go to the restart. Lap 72 of 140. Green flag. Ryan Hartz brings him down. Great start for the three. The nine of Matthew Bell pulling immediately in behind. 24 and 73 side by side. Nichols trying to see if he can get a run on the outside of Michael Kerr. Might be able to do so. That inside lane just not quite able to get up to speed that quickly. Well, they're still shuffling a little bit in the back there. That's Douglas Newbigging in the 71. As they're looking three wide there. That's Blaze McKinney again. He might have chugged another Celsius. He's ripping it on that outside lane side by side with Michael Kerr and cracking the top five. If you're wondering if he's on new tires? Nope. It's on the same tires as basically everybody else. He's on Celsius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the best on. advertisement I've seen of that stuff. Connor Horn is out on the racetrack, uh, but is definitely he's off pace. Very slow. Uh, it is, doesn't sound healthy either. I don't know that that engine's going to make it. I heard him off the throttle for quite a while. I don't know if it's because the engine temps are climbing, but that, that car has seen better days. Blaze McKinney at it going off turn four. Tempted straight. Find 06 of Spencer Burns. Have a good run into 06. Haven't seen him up front for a good bit since his win at Talladega. But he's having a good run so far, running fourth. Meanwhile, Curran's still fighting the other Nichols brother, Tyler Nichols, for the sixth position. Here comes Jake down to the inside for second place as Matthew Bell jumps up the racetrack. Newbegin way up top here. He's going to ride the rim of Chicagoland Speedway. Travis Beckner also filtering into this mix. And the 24 going backwards pretty quick here on this restart. Yeah, not the best to start to get them being stuck on that inside lane. This is not the place you want to be. I think that outside lane is very much the place to be, especially on the restart. You can get the speed much faster. And Curran is trying to get out there, but everyone keeps free trading him there. Sure, Jr. now Travis Beckner looking to make his way through in the 28. Haven't talked about him too much tonight. He's running inside the top 10 now. I think this is the first time he's cracked the top 10 all race. And he's flirting with the middle, but Sheer Jr. is going to close the opportunity there for Beckner. So Curran on the opposite end at Jake Nichols is. He's up to third, and Curran just trying to stay inside the top 10. Yeah, it's definitely going the wrong direction here. He's got to right the ship relatively quickly, too, because he's going to go all the way to the back. And there he goes up to the outside right ahead of the two. Let him in line. And 
it's handy to have a teammate helping you out here. We'll see if he can parlay that to forward movement here as Newbegin is going to get sandwiched three wide out of turn four. Yeah, very tight year. We've seen a lot of three wide action go wrong, especially on the front straightaway. David Weiser working from the bottom, trying to make his climb back forward after a speed penalty, putting him way down the order. That 33 led a couple laps earlier. Yeah, he was up front for a good bit, but still struggling through the mid pack. It's amazing he stayed clean throughout this whole ordeal with what's going on around him. Uh, still trying to work his way through. He's inside the top 15, trying to get back in the top 10. Hello, Blaze McKinney, three wide in the middle. Tyler Nichols on the outside, Becker on the bottom. He had a bit of a wiggle there, might have tapped the apron, but they get it through relatively unscathed. Yeah, still three abreast down here into turn one. Beckner is way down on the bottom. It's hard to maintain this line. A little rub going off into turn one, and Beckner will shove his way through up into seventh place, as high as he's run all day. Very tight quarters here up in the top few spots. Matt Bocaria now getting a run on the 87. And he got four south, three wide, and now he's current trying to make a move to the outside to get up to ninth place. Eventually eighth, we get back there. Richard Jr. is running in ninth place at the moment, can he? He's looking to go middle here, but then he'll settle back in line behind Ed Shearer Jr. on the outside, heading into turn one. And that's 17, ripping the absolute closest lane you could possibly, possibly be to the wall before hitting it. He's got a new beginning below him now, Curran does, for 10th on the track. Uh, Spectre making it clear. No one's going to the inside of him off into three. Everyone's kind of fighting for the bottom, but I still think the outside is pretty good for movement. We see the 24 moving back the right direction now. Uh, now that he has gone up for the upper group. Here's Senesak up to the high side, and Mitchell's going to cover that off into turn one. They try to block the advance. Here's Edris will look to the outside of Michael Curran. Senesak offset from him. And David Weiser charging him through through the middle. And he'll stay behind the 71. They were almost snaking up there inside that top five. Saw the one of Noel had a little bit of a strange wiggle there as he was following his teammate. Uh, Ryan on board with the 51 of Ricky Springer running 15th. He's kept it relatively calm so far for the most part. Has worked his way from back near 30th and is about halfway through the running order, running in the inside there of the 09 of Sunnyside. Update uh, for the 42 looks like he brought it down to pit lane. I'm not sure if he's called it already. We're going to fix out more damage. Oh, I actually just rolled back out of, out of his pit stall. So back out there getting some more damage fixed to that car. Trying to keep it in the going. Now that he's four lap, five laps down, though, the only chance he's really got is if the other two wreck. I don't know that he'll be able to get those back. Uh, in the amount of laps we have left, even with a bunch of yellows. So uh, those championship hopes continue to slide down the drain. And just frustrating for both the 56 and the 42 scenarios. I don't want to say completely out of the 42's control because he could have not been there, but that's not really much of an option all the time. So it's just luck of the draw. Yeah, it really is, especially for the 56 case. You know, we always say you know, for some racing, you don't have engine failures or mechanical failures of any kind, but you have the internet and that can definitely fail you. Unfortunately, fail that in the worst possible time. Or you can imagine his frustration trying to deal with that. Hopefully he comes back next season stronger. And if he does come back stronger, it's going to be scary because he's already the dominant car of the season. There's less than 60 to go here from the Auto Club. Ryan Hartz continues to lead the way. His best finish of the season in the Cup Series has been fourth. That happened last week at Auto Club. So a lot of these guys that are running up front, building off the momentum they had last week at Auto Club. Meanwhile, Matthew Fell still in hot pursuit of the three of Hartz. He was eliminated from the playoffs um, in the Pro Series last week in Auto Club as well. So he's just trying to end on a high note, possibly end with a winning note as the championship leader, Jake Nichols, runs third. He has been really the top seed for the title all night long. Perhan got close and he got buried in traffic, and he's still fighting his way back as the two follows him off into turn three. There's Blaze McKinney now going the wrong direction after driving his way forward. But I think this 24, given a long run, he seems to have really good long run pace, but the restart was not kind. You, know, you just got really caught out by the restart being stuck in that bottom lane. I think mean, that's really hurt him the most, and I'm just trying to recover back from that one. The outside of Sure Jr battle for any place between those two and you'll get it off the court. Boy, McKinney got a bump from Douglas Newbigin coming out of turn two down a little bit squirrely. Lap 86 and we're ticking away laps. Guys, we haven't even really considered green flag pit stops, but 31 laps in on this stint. Maybe we should start thinking about that soon. 
You definitely should keep that in mind here. You can make one more stop before, at least one more stop before this is all said and done. It's a matter of question, it's going to be about when they're going to come on down. If they want to come down early, maybe stay out a little bit longer. Yeah, uh, especially with the way these guys have been racing around the racetrack, they're, literally every lane is raceable, top to middle to bottom. The guys are going to have to get on pit road somehow, and with the steep banking here at Chicagoland, about 18 degrees in the turns, it's going to be steep getting from that to the apron while trying to maintain pace speed and could result in someone spinning, someone speeding, and then you got to make sure you don't overslide your pit box too. Rysenisak up to 13th place. Whoa, see him working the wheel there out of turn four and had a bit of a wiggle. That might be indicative of the state that some of these tires are in after 30 laps of racing. We're down about uh, six tenths of a second from our fastest times of the night. See the track temp, not only down about a degree from where we started fitting, but things are cooling off. Trying to cool off, and I'm sure driver's going to enjoy a little bit of extra drift that comes with that. Not a whole lot, but every degree helps. these drivers have cooled off a good bit too. Yeah, it definitely seems less frantic. We are missing about seven cars that started the race and the battle for the lead. Might be on here for a moment as Hartz and Bell run nose to tail, then Jake Nichols third, Seth Knoll fourth. What could have been for this one car though, guys? I know it's uh, not a lot of use talking about coulda, woulda, shoulda, but uh, one spot better last week or without the that was uh, overturning a decision post-race, this one car would be in it and fighting his teammate for a championship right now. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to be frustrated with it, uh, you know, from what he said in Discord after the incident. It's like they just said, well, nothing you can do. Just get your head down, finish the season strong, and then move on to the next season. To do it, we've got to appreciate that. Just trying to have a solid race. Doing that exactly now, running in fourth and behind his teammate Jake Nichols. So, solid run for the one. Of course, I'm sure he would like to at least win this race at the end of the season. So, definitely on the cards here to win the top four. Yeah, still looking at the season on the high note. They got uh, team points going out. Uh, they entered this race with the lead in that, and obviously Jake Nichols running up front for the drivers' championship and. Not too far behind is that 24 of Michael Curran looking to get the job done himself for Fazekas Motorsports on the driver's side of things. He's running eighth right now behind Tyler Nichols. Under 50 laps to go now as Tom DeLeo goes another lap down, puts him two laps down to the leaders. A little tight off there into one as everyone kind of fans back out. Spencer Burns still having a really good oh, night. He's in the wall. Yeah, 22 struggling here. He'll get off of it, but this, this 0 6. Uh, of Spencer Burns, 21st up to fifth place and just having a really solid night. And is in position here to maybe even move up a little further with some strategy. Well, let's say at the moment he's content with running right in behind the leaders, keeping that 06 car up in front, though. He's got Travis Beckner closing in from behind as well as Michael Curran. They can definitely pose a threat to take him outside the top five. Other than his win at Talladega, his best finish was seventh at Las Vegas. So very good on the mile and a half. So also got 11th at the Charlotte Oval. So those six knows a thing or two about running well on these mile and a half circuits. Travis Beckner also up to sixth place. Could he be a big threat for this win to steal it out from under the noses of the championship drivers, especially with only two of them running up in the top ten? Look at Spencer Burns to the outside. And hello, Michael Curran. Where did he come from? It looks like Beckner actually, I think, let him on through. That, that's a stay out of unheard of to let Travis, <laughs> Travis let someone through. <laughs> like, he's like, hey, this battle's a little bit more important than mine. I'll go give him the spot and I'll let him go chase it. I'm also, one thing I wanted to... Go on. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out, too, that was kind of funny at the... Just after the restart, uh, Ryan Hart's typed in the chat, rain, please. <laughs> Matthew Bell uploaded that. <laughs> Bad news there for them. No Not rain. chance of rain. <laughs> Zero chance, yeah. Uh, oh, there are three wide back there. Hello, Garrett Grant, new digging in the middle. David Weishart still trying to climb his way back inside the top 10. 
Guys having a good battle here. Ricky Springer right behind us. Weishardt looking to make a pit stop. He's slowing down. Is he going to be able to make it? And we just saw our first green flag pit stop, Kyle. At 45 laps to go, and he's got 40 laps on his tires, so almost right down the middle. And I think that's going to start a fray of, uh, of pit stops here. We've only got about 20 minutes of green flag racing left. So, yeah, if you're thinking about trying to get ahead a little bit on the strategy, not a bad time to give it a go. I don't think drivers like Curhan should break just yet, though, even though they're back a little ways, I would use the momentum I've got, drive up to the back of Jake Nichols, and then kind of do whatever he does, Finian, because racing on a level playing field with the 73 might be his best shot. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be the move to make. I think just, you know, don't try to do play over play it, over undercut, overcut. Just come on in with the 73, right them behind him, you're similar in pace. You know, when you, oh, you try to do the undercut overcut, you run the risk of being you know, off the strategy for the undercut as the kids coming up on you, passing with the pressure tires. Overcut might not have enough time to get back to. Here you see the race analysis so far with over 40 laps to go, had five leaders, seven lead changes, and a whole lot of green flag racing, but also a whole lot of calamity with four yellows in the race as Cameron Hearn makes his way down pit road. Justin Bonnerant's going to also head down there in the 11. And it's getting pretty tight here, and Curhan is making up lots of ground. He lost all these positions on the restart. Look at Burns wasting no time. He's going to drop to the inside of the one, and Nichols does the same on the number nine of Matthew Bell. Worrying that inside. I was wondering if they were maybe considering coming to pit lane to hear anything, but they're just fanning out and making some moves. Nichols trying to go up to second place. Burns up to fourth. Curran just trying to pick a lane, or either lane, just trying to run the outside of the one. Well, that time in turn four, Spencer Burns was sniffing the quarter panel of Seth Knoll. That almost ended badly for the 24. Michael Curran had that uh, contact been made, but Curran going to fight on that outside of the one. The defense for Jake Nichols in the 73 is he almost had a moment himself in turn four. I, I really like this 24 car right now. Moving forward late in the run, we could go green the, end, the rest of the way here. He's got the pace at the right time, and I don't think there's any disadvantage he's got over Jake Nichols other than just not being ahead of him right now. Uh, I think this 24 could. I mean, he's got a 50-50 shot. He might even be better than that with the pace he's showing here late in this run. Hearing word, a couple leaders coming in this time by. Ryan Hart's one of them coming on in. Surrenders the lead. Off he'll go. The race continues on the racetrack. Matthew Bell now in charge of this race. A couple more takers as you see on the far right of your screen. Jake Nichols is going to peek to the outside. He's going to look for a run to try and get around the nine of Bell. Might have a strong run here down the back stretch. He will, but the nine's going to get in that outside lane, so maybe think, the nine's coming down pit road this time, Finian. Yeah, I think I thought I just heard him on the radio call that he's going to be coming down as well. So the leaders, one by one, making a trip to pit lane. This is a really challenging pit road to get onto as well. If you haven't tried this one yet in iRacing, I think it's one of the hardest mile and a half to get onto. I think maybe Dover might be more challenging, but and yeah. Darlington, but this place is, is just so far from the racing line, and you're carrying so much speed and the banking so tall that coming off of it puts you in a, in a compromising position. But Nichols first, Kerhan third. 38 laps to go next time by. I don't want to run too long, guys, because you're not going to have enough time to use your tires. Plays McKinney all the way up on the outside. Michael like Curran coming down. I like this call. And he actually called that out really late, too. <laughs> Trying to, I think, make sure that uh, Nichols didn't have enough time to react to it. He's going to do the undercut. Crack position. Yeah, I'm curious to see how will Jake Nichols respond. And he's coming in this time by. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of opportunity, Hunter, to go longer because he's running out of laps, so the overcut won't work. He's going to have to come back down a pit lane and just hope he can outrace the 24. He's going to hit pit lane, so will the 1. A little bit fast there for the oh. 73, but he got it woed down. Uh, that's crucial there. Don't want to do that. Got the 1, the 06, and the 28 coming in behind him, so um, interesting to note there. We'll see how this all works out in the end. I think in the short term, the 24, if he executed right, should come out leading by maybe a second or two over the 73. I'm not sure will it be in relation to the other drivers yet. Uh, but Kerhan, I have him scored ahead of Bell and behind Hearts. So he gained a couple spots in those that pit very early. Here comes the 24. 73 is rolling. 
Up goes into turn one. Curran working into the entry of turn, uh, turn one right now. You can see him just come by in the picture, flying on through. Whoa! Past Ben Pierce and past the 73 of Jake Nichols. He will be the leader of the championship fight. Can he hold him off for 35 laps? Going to be the big question mark here entering the final stage of not only this race, but the season in general. Definitely going to be a sprint from here on up to the end. Oh, this is all culminating to a, what will, will be a very memorable Chicagoland race nonetheless, regardless of what happens now, just from what has happened beforehand. But this championship battle on top of this, with just the 24 and the 73 remaining, going to be very crucial here in the next 30 laps or so. Yeah, I don't think the extra lap that the 73 ran is going to help him at all. It just seemed to hurt him. That was excellent strategy by the 24 to call that out late, Finian, so he could hit pit lane before Jake could react. And he knew, Curhan did, that there was not enough laps for Jake to just drive longer and overcut. You're going to run out of time. So I like the call that the 24 made, but this is the bet he's laid in, and now he's going to have to stick with it to the end of the race. He doesn't need to win the race. I'm sure he'd like to. Uh, there's a couple cars ahead of him, uh, Skyoli, Weishart, and Hartz, that uh, he might catch, but he doesn't need to catch them. I would only be focusing on that uh, rear view and keeping the 73 back there. Yeah, that's why I like to mention it's going to be exactly his main focus. Forget everything else. Finish ahead of the 73. Bigger picture. Although he is catching up to the four camera her and Ryan Arts, but Matthew Bell is working around his outside the number nine. And to see if Curran's going to be willing to put up the fight here. I don't think so. Save your stuff. You're going to need it. And the up the nine is going to clear the 24 with the is bigger picture is on the mind for the 24 Michael Curran. You see him look down at his relative box. He knows exactly where that 73 is. I bet you he'll check it again on the backstretch. Watch his eyes here as we leave turn two. I bet you he'll look down and, and check that box again. Check the mirrors. Maybe not. Maybe every lap. Oh, I, it, it was me. You see me constantly looking mirror, relative, <laughs> yeah. mirror, relative, corner, yeah. mirror, mirror, mirror. Did, did I do that 100 feet of the track right? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the check. Looking down. I, the thing is, I think you can get in your head here, Hunter, because I, I do think the 73 is going to try to run him down. Obviously, he's going to try, but I think he, he might. <laughs> Um, no, you don't say. <laughs> but, so I, I think it's almost counterintuitive to, to look at the, the relative box because you're just going to make yourself nervous. Yeah, you, you want to keep your focus on the racetrack at ease, not with the intervals as they are oh. looking almost, they are very dangerous behind Jake Nichols. Oh, and, no. The five of Garrett oh, Grant's going to oh, spin. That's going to be a, no, that might not be a caution. It will be. Oh, no, it's going to be caution. Right here. Oh, Jacob Bell. <laughs> Caution. Keep your foot in it, and we stay green. <laughs> I don't know who hit wow. the wall. That was Jacob Bell sailing through oh. there. Greg Mitchell in the two and Garrett <laughs> Green in the five. Are <laughs> you sure Jacob Bell is yelling about caution coming out at inopportune times for him and then not coming out at opportune times for him? This is your battle for the lead right now. Casey Lakatis has been out here for 40 laps. This whole group... Uh, owes us a pit stop still. That caution would be catastrophic for Perhan's chances. He's got yeah. a pretty significant advantage now. He does not want to burn that under yellow. He's kind of hoping and praying everyone just plays nice with each other in <laughs> these last 30 or so laps. It's looking more and more in his favor every single lap that passes by. What a, I mean, can you imagine? He was out at the checkered flag last week. And think back to Fontana a couple of years ago when it was a last lap, last turn crash that the 24 came through, won the race, and advanced into the playoffs after being hedged for elimination. He went on to win that championship, and here he is in ninth, but aiming to uh, pick up a bunch of spots as cars around him pit. The most important thing is the only other car that can beat him in the title is seconds behind him. And guess who's right in front of Jake Nichols? 24 team mate Cameron Hurt. Well, didn't say and, it was going to be easy, did we? Yeah, I was going to say, back there also to the outside of the 73, that's going to harm him. 100% will harm him indeed as Ryan on the bumper here. Looking at the 28 going to the inside. 
of Cameron Hearn and the 73 Jake Nichols trying to follow in pursuit. Oh, so Cameron Hearn is going to back out. Let them go through. Jake's going to try to take up op this opportunity here to drive down the inside of the 28. Got to pick him off one at a time. But he, he is, I mean, it's run out of laps. Maybe 25 to go in a lap or two here, and they tick down so quick. We're going to know our champion without a yellow in the next 13 minutes. If the season. That, it, that's a big if. Just ahead of Michael Curran, you can see our Matthew Bell, David Weiser, Ryan Hart is effectively in battle for the lead. Once this all sorts out. Skyoli is uh, way ahead of this. Actually, yeah, I was going to say he's, he's pit with everyone else and legitimately in the lead by two and a half seconds ahead of He took Ryan two Hart's. tires, Finney, and that's how he did that. Ah, uh, okay. That was, I was wondering, I was like, yeah, where did he come from? <laughs> I don't want to be middle three wide, but I don't need <laughs> these spots. I would be picking these battles very carefully. Yeah, he's going to go take them one by one at the very least. He's going to try to take them one by one. He's going to the inside of David Weiser. This is where, Hunter, if you've got brownie points you saved up by being nice all season, this is where you're going to redeem them. Please, sir, may I have the spot? <laughs> that's a, that's a I just want to be a champion like you, that. David. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have a chance. Yeah, God. Michael Curran entered this race as undoubtedly the underdog with that sole win from Kansas. Six top fives, nine top tens, 25 laps led. Ten average finish of temp, though, which very consistent, uh, very uh, much matters in the area cup series whenever you're trying to go places and it could lead you to a championship. And then, like I said, having that breakout moment at Kansas, winning that race with Jake Nichols in a very clean fashion, gets you those brownie points, Kyle, like you mentioned, and he's redeeming them nicely here in the closing stages of season five of the area cup series season. Yeah, just went by the 42 of Connor Horn, who got involved in a collision with Mason Kane earlier as Kane got uh, tagged by Blaze McKinney and went up into the outside wall and uh, collected the 42. The 56 of Jake Matheson out with internet connectivity problems early in the race. And uh, that was on lap 24. So it, since then, it's just been the 24 and the 73. A lap short for Kerhan on the previous stint uh, to the 73. Gained a little bit of time because of that undercut, and he now has the advantage. And he's being pretty careful about this. Uh, Jake Nichols is a couple of seconds back still. I don't know that he wants to sit back here for the rest of the race, but he's definitely being patient, and I think that's going to help him. I don't know if this is on purpose, though. It, it seems like he's trying to get up there, right? but I don't think he's got enough speed over Travis Becker to make a move. So he's kind of just stuck here and just watching the current slowly drive off a little bit more in the distance. Yeah, and over the long run, Nichols is at very consistent speed, but Curran's been able to work his way up through the back half of the top ten inside the top five, again close to Jake Nichols. So with the rules reversed here, it's going to be interesting to see how the 73 can diminish this gap to Michael Curran. Curran's last lap, a 31-289. 31-201 for Jake Nichols, a little bit faster. But a long way to go. And 20 laps to go. Yeah, I'd say also, just in general, as far as the lead, the race is concerned, they're not really catching the James Kelly. I think Sko has actually put a bit of a gap with these guys in on. That two tire call was a really smart move. Skyler won a race this season? He has. He won back at Charlotte Roval. Charlotte Roval. Sure did. Yes. Been a while for him. Back race six of the season a couple of months ago. What a call that would be. That, that was not the call I thought would put him in position to win this race, given the, uh, the surface here. But we have seen the next-gen tire go a long ways, unless your track name rhymes with uh, Vristol. <laughs> <laughs> you just add another R to it? <laughs> This is side by side for the lead, but both these drivers will have to pit one more time. Ben Pierce and Justin Inosogak. Yeah, really surprised they haven't Ooh. come down yet. Still up there, top four all yet to pit. Everyone else good to the end. 
these guys want to have their fun too. Let's see the top four. Ooh, I tell you what, that. some more. Nicole, cool. he's starting to get a lot closer to my car. Yeah, they again they've been lapping quicker. And so maybe there was some strategy there of not fighting the 28 and not pushing the issue and just trusting that this whole pack would advance and they have. Last time by Jake Nichols at a 31.5 to Carhan's 31.541. So it's and nibbling away, but it's nibbling away nonetheless. And Newbing's caught up to the 24, Michael Curran. He's got fresher tires and a little bit quicker pace. So he might get past him and put Curran down one spot closer to the 73. For those brownie points I referenced, start using them up. Sorry, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> You want to have as many cars as you can between yourself and your championship rival. And if Newbigging gets by him, then you only have one. But he's going to take this opportunity to go around the outside of Matthew Bell. And that's a critical position. Finney, it's one more car that Nichols has to pass. Yeah, that's my current saying, please protect me. <laughs> <laughs> the scary man is getting close to behind me. <laughs> and Doug Newbigging will also go around Matthew Bell. Bell back to ninth place. It's another line of defense there for uh, Michael Curran in the 24 as Nichols has diminished that gap quite a bit. It's about and one second now separating the two. Battling with Beckner off of turn two, not quite able to get the run off of two to get clear of the 28, but he's still in that fight and he's fighting hard to get past. He's tired of playing games. He wants to push down. Running out of laps. Again. Yeah. This is frustrating. Uh, <laughs> you can sense how important this is as, as Jake is pushing the issue here. Doesn't want to have to use up. Oh, the one's going to go up there and try to try to move the 28 out of the way. I don't know that it did a whole lot, but it did something. Uh, pushed him a little bit more out of the lane. Oh. That's 73 slamming the door shut. Beckner's just going to go to the bottom. Nichols going to try and pinch him down, maybe force him into an error. Uh, not gonna... the <laughs> Clever driving. Got clear of him there. I mean, the Seth did a great job there. Didn't wreck him, didn't even really hit him. Just kind of chased him up the hill enough to let the 73 go. And now, Jake has 1.3 seconds to run down Bell and then Curry. Like that be it. Doug Newbing has gotten past the 24 of Curran, so he's now watching a battle between the three and 71 directly ahead of him. He can't make any more forward progress. Hear the Jaws music. Yeah. <laughs> Laps are ticking down, though, and it's a lot of time to make up. We'll see what the times are this time. Whoa. Well, it's a lot of time to make up, as well, but they're battling directly in front of them, so I think 24 is going to be losing time. Now he's stuck on the bottom. Ryan Hart's defending that spot. 31-5 to a 31-3, Hunter. Yeah, the, the three of Hart's, he's just fighting to stay as close to the front as possible, trying to end the season on a high note which currently, I believe, that would be for the podium spot once everything cycles through. So I'm trying to block current from that, but don't want to get too aggressive and you know, rough off a little bit in the process. But current in a comfortable spot right now in eighth. Nichols in 10th, trying to hunt him down. And he's gained. 31-7 for Curran that time. 31-4 for Jake Nichols. That's more than a tenth of lap, Finian. Oh, new beginning in the wall. from the 42 Connor Horn. Apparently he's blown a tire. He feels like he's blown a tire. 48 laps. So we've got guys up in the front that ran 60 to 62. Well, he does have damage. He would, uh, he's been there yeah. put a lot of wheels to rotate, to rotate that car, so I imagine it's probably not in the most ideal conditions to race around here. Lap times on the left. Nichols was a hair quicker than Curran last time by, but didn't make the two to three tenth progress he had before. He can see him. Betcha Curhan would love a clear racetrack right about now. If he had a clear racetrack, I think it would be uh, pretty much set and done. But his progress has really been hampered here by this battle going on between Newbigging and Ryan Hart for a position. See the nerves. You can see him. He just did one of those nervous swallows. So much can go wrong in the next nine laps. Oh, there's the 42, way slow on the high side. 
Nichols was a tenth quicker. And that time about even. It all worked best. Ed Robertson was still out there. Are these guys trying to be able to make it? They didn't even make it. <sighs> no, I don't think they can. Going 70 laps? No. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, either way, James Kelly's caught them, and he's caught them really quickly because they're all trying to save fuel. I heard Ed Robertson clutching and coasting on the apron, so I think he's trying to see if he can get that car to go. This is not in the hearts. Yeah, they almost had contact and close to it right in front of Michael Curran. Not what he wants to see. No, and they're just racing. They're not doing anything wrong, but for Curran, he just wishes they would disappear. But unfortunately, the reset button doesn't work unless they're stopped. Ben Pierce coming to a pit lane as the battle continues directly in front of the 24. Meanwhile, the mirror, uh, not only is the mine there, but the 73 right in behind there. You see him peeking out. I'm here. Oh, man. This is just getting so, getting so gut wrenching for the 24 of Kern, for Fazekas Motorsports Sports as a whole. And then the 73 of Jake Nichols in oh. too, just trying to close the gap bit by bit. And this is ungodly distracting as well to have the three popping in and out. But there are your two championship rivals, nose to tail. Nichols is through. I don't think Bell's going to be able to put up much of a fight, so they're going to be nose to tail oh, here shortly. Boy. And five laps to go. curhan has got to use up his good guy chips right about now, Finian. He's got to run. Here he goes. Yeah, there he goes, finally with the dive, almost in the grass, trying to make a move. Three wide. This is a battle effectively for second place into turn one. Could be a championship winning move from the 24 of Curran, but he doesn't have a strong enough run like the 71 does. Going to get close to the wall. Jake Nichols, where does he go down the backstretch? He's going to try to make it four wide down the backstretch in the turn three. No way this works. Four wide, Curhan side by side with the 73 and Nichols. Nichols trying to clear him. Both these drivers have only won one race this season. Whoever gets the second win is going to go on to win the title. They might not even win the race with Scioli way up the road. The battle is for the championship, though, back here between these two. Uh, Michael Curran got a great run down the front straightaway and could be on that outside and will get that crucial run off for turn two. He will stay ahead of the 73. Steer clear of him for now, but what a move from Jake Nichols to make it four wide, and no one backed off either. Not even the three and the 71. They waited until they got on the corner exit to do so, but impressive driving from these two. Three laps to go. Michael Curran is going to have the longest three laps of his life. For Jake Nichols, they'll be the shortest. And up ahead, just an update. James Kelly working around Casey Licatis, finally getting around the number 50, will retake the lead. As we look back at these two, the battle for the championship. An entire season has come down to just a handful of laps. Michael Curran on the defense, Nichols on the offense. Well, Nichols sending it in the turn, trying to get underneath of him, didn't want to hit him. Curran going to try and carry off the track a little bit. We're trying to carry the momentum off the turn, just two laps to go in the season. Off into turn one. Three miles left for Michael Curran. A couple of seasons ago, he slid by, a crash out of turn four at Fontana, made it into the playoffs, went on to win the title. This year, an overturned decision post-race at Fontana puts him in the final four, and he didn't show up just to be here. He showed up to win. Here comes the 73, a multi-time champion in the Area Cup Series. Curran trying to cling to it. Coming to the white flag this time. It's going to be a battle between these two. White flag in the air. They're actually approaching Casey Lakatis pretty quickly. I think Lakatis, he's going to pull it to the side, stay out of it. These guys get elevated up to second place. It's on. Michael Curran is about a half lap away from completing the ultimate underdog story in the Area Cup Series. Down the backstretch for the final time. Sky only in the lead, but Curran going to try and defend Jake Nichols one more time through three and four. Last couple of corners in the season. Michael Curran came in here. Probably not even thinking he had a shot, but out of turn four, he has done it again from zero to hero. Checkered flag, Michael Curhan finishes second in the race, but wins the title in a battle against the 73 of Jake Nichols. And Michael Curhan has done it again from the last seed in the championship four to on top of the podium again. Yeah, and again, this time a week ago, wasn't even in the final four. And after being added in after an admin call, Goes up there and shows why he deserves to be in the championship four and will take it home. What an impressive drive from this 24 car. He stayed out of trouble for the most part, was able to work his way through the field in the longer runs. And I mean, he held off Jake Nichols by just a bit. Uh, what a phenomenal race from those two. 
And there you see the congratulatory bumps from the race winner, the seven. So we might have some dual burnouts here. Yeah, when you get an opportunity like Michael got last week, getting in on the, uh, the, the overturned last lap penalty, you can't waste it, and he did not. There's a seven awaiting his burnout moment, but the 24. What is it with him and the underdog story? It just seems like he is unable to do it the old-fashioned way, Finney, and he's got to get in and make a show out of it. Yeah, I was going to say, fantastic job, and he ran a fantastic race in general. Got that 24 car, he had a big hurdle to climb. Started back in 25th. Just climbed that car forward to the front, got in the top five, and pretty much never left the top five. And then also that crucial car call at the end came in a lap early ahead of the 73 to get the track position with the undercut, and it paid off. Well, his sign set it in the background, looking at another trophy, and he did just that here at Chicagoland. Do you see that in the background, the trophy going to be another one right next to it. Michael Curhan only won one race this season, but he finished second in the race that counts. Six, uh, add, add one of these, so seven top fives, ten top tens, an average finish of tenth. And of the championship four, those were the third best stats uh, as far as the consistency and tied for last as in the seeds of race wins. The two drivers that won nine races of the 17, uh, they did not have a shot at the title because of various circumstances this evening. But Michael Curran steals another one. What a battle, what a race up at the front. Some dramas in the middle part of the race, Finian, but once it cleared up, it was all the show between Curran and Nichols. And how about James Scioli, by the way, winning the race? <laughs> I'm gonna say the, old, the most overshadowed win of the yes. season. Scioli, after having a pretty poor season overall, he's able to find some solace and it gets win number two to his name after being taking out of the playoff picture a little bit earlier on the season. Ryan Arts finishing in fourth with Newbigging in fifth, Seth Null sixth. Bell in seventh, McKinney, Beckner, and Burns running out of your top ten. Man, phenomenal race there to cap off the season. Springer, Tyler Nichols just missing that top ten. So did David Weishart. Couldn't recover completely from that speeding error. Uh, Cameron Hearn and Greg Mitchell, teammates of Michael Curran, finishing 14th and 15th. Jacob Bell, even though he scraped the wall trying to avoid a car, uh, crash, that wasn't a caution, 16th. Then Senna Sackshear, Jr., Bondurant, and Lakata top 20. And look down the rest of the order. This is where the dramas begin. Uh, a couple of drivers involved in incidents throughout the night. Dwayne Culberson caught up in one that he was not uh, going to be a part of, unfortunately. Uh, Connor Horn, though, the story on this page, 24th. Involved in a crash, uh, triggered by Mason Kane and the 87 of Blaze McKinney. Uh, disappointing end to his season, but he didn't have a good qualifying and not a very good start to the race, Finian. So uh, part of that you could probably attribute to uh, just not qualifying well, and that just exemplifies how important qualifying is. Yeah, it really does. And I mean, it's great to see the battle between those two from different parts of the field, how it played out. And I'm sure for Nichols, he's probably just looking back of uh, different decisions he probably could have made to get him up there, but unfortunately might have to wait for next season. Well, that's the rest of your results here. Let's chat with, uh, how about we start with race winner James Scioli. And uh, we always say that these race wins uh, in the last race, if you're not in the championship, are uh, generally overlooked. And unfortunately, we didn't even get you across to the finish, James, <laughs> because we were watching the battle. I think you can forgive us for that. But uh, a season for you with two wins. Didn't have a chance to run for a title this season, but you're going to cap it off with a win at the Roval and one here at Chicago. Uh, great strategy call. Two tires, and that paid off. Yeah, no uh, no hard feelings to you guys. Uh, first, got to say a, a huge hats off to Michael and Jake for putting on a heck of a show for the championship. I'm uh, excited to be racing for one on Thursday, but uh, tonight was definitely about them. So glad you guys captured that battle for him. Yeah, I was just, I was started at the back, just wanted to see what I could do. And finally kind of started making some headway before halfway to go there. And then ended up in a wreck with some some damage it wasn't too bad but it was irreparable so i uh i figured on the long run maybe two was gonna loosen the car up which luckily it did because the setup was was just so tight especially with the little bit of damage that i did have so goal was just to be on pit road for the least amount of time shaved probably four or five seconds there and i was honestly just surprised when i was looking at the gap to hearts it just stayed at three seconds the whole time so i just uh, couldn't really believe that that worked out like that 
Well, James, we want to wish you the best. Uh, congratulations on stealing a win here from the uh, the championship drivers and uh, going out on a high note. And good luck to you next season. And, of course, uh, there's some other races left this week. I'm sure you'll be in. Uh, so good luck to you there, and, uh, and we'll see you. Thanks for chatting. Yeah, thank you. I want to give a, a huge shout out to you guys for putting these races on for us all season long. You guys always do a great job. So big thanks there. Thanks to the admin team for uh, making it through uh, another long cup season. And then huge shout out to Lucky Ducks, Simrap Market, Coastal Tinting and Roasted Gems Coffee for being on the car. And hopefully we're uh, talking to you guys on Thursday. James, thanks so much. Congratulations. We'll see you there. Thanks, guys. And uh, didn't make it to really battle a championship all the way out, but Connor Horn joins us now, finishes the race in 24th. Connor, not the way that you wanted it to go tonight, uh, getting involved in uh, someone else's dirty laundry there, but stuck. man, <laughs> uh, stuck. Dis disappointing <laughs> end, but a, a very good season, three wins on the season, uh, and just had really good stats all around. So missed opportunity, uh, yes, but does this give you hope that maybe next season it's your title? Uh, depends on the people in the league. I'm going to get the congratulating people in a second, but I think the people that, uh, th there's a lot of people that don't have respect and patience, and that showed in the first half of the race. Thankfully, it went green the last half, so uh, we got a good run for the title at the end, so that's great for everyone. But uh, so many drivers who just run short run, uh, run for the short run, then realize they wore their tires out, and then... Uh, you know, instead of just being respectful, they'll just clog the top. And that's why you see three and four wide, like we saw at Charlotte earlier in the season, like we saw it, I think, a little bit at Kansas. These guys don't get out of the way. They race you like a clown. And uh, that's what causes wrecks. That's what causes stack ups. That's why we only got the one green flag run, the one green flag pit stop. Would have at least one more if uh, people would keep their head on. But a uh, number of drivers had that issue, and I got caught up in one of those issues. I didn't qualify well. You can contribute some of it to me. But uh, I think I would have been right behind Curran if I didn't repair the damage I got from getting put in the wall uh, by someone else who didn't have respect. Just lack of respect. Saw it all through the playoffs. Multiple non-playoff drivers altered the the title, which is why there had to be an appeal last week. And then, you know, thankfully there was no controversy really, like legit controversy. I'm just really upset at the guys who should just stick to running for truck titles instead of running a cup car when they can't handle it. It's not that hard to go down to try oval, but it is for some people. Uh, uh, so that's unfortunate, but uh, I, I'll probably be back I'll compete for the championship four. It was a dogfight this year. If we have the same people in the playoffs again, it's going to be even more of a dogfight because we might even add more drivers. So that should be fun. And uh, all that aside, uh, real big congratulations to James getting a win at the end of a season. And uh, big congratulations to Michael because he drove his ass off and he deserved the title probably more than anyone after the drive he put on, you know, having older tires and holding off the, what was he, three times in a row to champion. Yep. Uh, that, that was incredible. Thank you, Finian. Uh, <laughs> so that was incredible. And uh, I'm glad for him. I, it would have been cool to see Nichols win again, but Curhan is a good guy and you can't hate that. And also, uh, if, uh, you know, I feel bad for Matheson because uh, I at least got a chance to get through the field and didn't make it work. Uh, Jake Matheson, he didn't even have a chance, so I feel for him as well. It would have been cool to have all four of us up at the front. Just wasn't able to get that done. And one more thing, I'm sorry I'm holding you too long, Kyle. I know you don't like me doing this, but I thank my team, <laughs> 609 Motorsports. Uh, I gotta thank Jeremy Miller for sticking out, getting points at the end. I think we fell on the team points, which is what pays, which is a shame. But uh, it is what it is. Jonathan Oates, uh, 73 Creative, making our paint schemes as well. Uh, they looked really good tonight, especially. Uh, they didn't look as good when the bumper got ripped off, but I got the front bumper back near the end of a race, so that's good. So all in all, I, uh, my goal this season was to make the championship four, and I did that. Just wish I got a better shot at it this season. Connor Horn comes up short in the title. Uh, Connor, tough scenario tonight, but uh, I guess we'll chat in the booth tomorrow about the truck race. We'll see you there. Thanks. I will right, see you there. That was a classic Connor Horn interview. Haven't had one of those in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Let's chat with our championship runner-up, Jake Nichols. Time and time again this season, you fought that 24 side by side over and over and over. He beat you out a couple times. You beat him a couple of times, Jake, but uh, a one lap undercut on the pit stop sequence. He gets ahead of you, not quite able to wrestle it away, but a clean and fair fight the way it should be done for a title. Your thoughts? Um, that was fun. Um, as fun as it's going to be. I mean, it was so tight out there, which made it really hard to pass. And I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to do something that was going to wreck one or both of us in that scenario. Like I, I could have drove it harder into three on that four wide scenario and probably cleared him and just won, won the race just because of how tight it was. But 
I didn't want to go in there and get pulled up the track with the aero platform we have and just wreck all of us for no reason. So, like, obviously there's a title on the line, but what's what's the point if you're just going to wreck at least, you know, your competitors in that scenario? So, I mean, I'll take it. My mindset this whole season was team title, team title, team title. Uh, we wanted to get both, obviously, you know, to stay perfect would have been awesome. But um, I'm happy that we brought a great lineup out there. Seth did an amazing job. Tyler did an amazing job. He ran really, really good tonight. Uh, Dwayne came in clutch last week with his 11th. I know it really didn't matter because we got a good gap at the end of the night in the team standings. But uh, unfortunate for Matheson, I know the feeling. I've had a lot of luck, or a lot of bad luck, I should say, with with lagging out of races, whether it's, you know, internet, my internet, or just something to do with iRacing service But as of recent. but. Uh, you hate to see that, especially with how good he was this season. I would have loved to see what he could have done in this battle, but... And same with Connor getting wrecked, too, obviously out of his control. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, a, lot, a lot of weird racing tonight from guys that had no business kind of doing that kind of stuff, but... At the end of the day, we'll take it. Um, I was going to be clean with Michael no matter what. He's always been re so respectful to me, and... You know, there was... Some talk last week, you know, with the whole e EOL thing from from the end of last week that got him in but like i told everyone if he goes out there and wins then he he earned it and uh he did that all the respect to him hopefully we can go and uh one up that finish and come out a winner on thursday and uh at least get a driver dub at the end of the week <laughs> jay congratulations and appreciate you putting on a fair fight up there with the 24 it's just a, a pleasure and refreshing to watch uh, two guys have that much respect race that hard and come out the other side with without a single dent on the door so congratulations for that and uh, thanks for talking with us, as always. Thank you, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. That was, that was fun. It was a show. Thanks a lot, Jake. Thank you. And, man, they say that nice guys finish last. But if there's a guy that's a living, breathing example that that is not always true, it's you. And, man, Michael, a couple of seasons now we've had this happen where you're not in the, the playoffs going into the Final Four. Then you are. You're the bottom seed. And then... Where you just come out of nowhere and win the race. You did this. You didn't win the race this time, but you finished second. That was enough to beat Jake Nichols, and you had your hands full those last couple laps defending from him. But a clean, fair fight. Those brownie points you deposited at Kansas when you won the race, you were able to cash those back in. You have to be on top of the world right now. Uh, where do I begin? Yeah, I mean, absolute kudos to Jake for, for racing me clean. He could have done a million other things to, to move me out of the way there at the end, and he didn't. Um, so absolute respect to him and really to the whole field tonight. Um, you know, I, I definitely feel like they, you know, they were giving me room at least. I don't want to speak for everyone, but they were giving me room um, at least and, and showing me a lot of respect. So uh, shout out to everyone in, in the field. But man, I really thought I threw away the race in qualifying, uh, hitting the wall to where my, my lap was invalidated. So I had to start in the back. Um, but surprisingly, was able to work my way up. And then that first caution came out that kind of really helped punch the field back up and, and give me a chance to uh, to get up to the front. So, um, yeah, if you would have said I would have been anywhere near Jake Nichols or the lead um, for the battle for the championship at the start of the race, I would have thought you were crazy because I was just I just thought I threw it away. So, yeah, such a wide range of emotions. And then the battle at the end, the, the uh, uh, Matt and Ryan were battling right in front of me and they were slowing me up. They were backing me up to Jake and I didn't want to put it three wide. But at some point, I just had to because Jake was there at the end. And uh, oh my gosh, yeah, then we were four wide at one point. So it, yeah, just absolutely crazy. And I didn't have any right front left. I probably have 5%. I don't even know. It felt like 5%, uh, but just enough to hold Jake off. So uh, man, I'm over the moon. Can't believe I uh, got a championship. It was uh, one, heck of a, one heck of a fight, one heck of a race. It's just been a pleasure watching you race, uh, you and Jake, all season long. You guys going back and forth at Kansas was a highlight, one of the closest finishes in history. Tonight, he didn't yeah. get that close. So you, you beat him to the stripe by, uh, well, just shy of two-tenths of a second, so it wasn't that far either. But, Michael, yeah. congratulations. Just a pleasure to watch you. I said the same thing to Jake, that it is so refreshing to watch two drivers race each other that hard for something that important and not leave a dent on each other's door. That, that takes a lot, uh, and I think the highest skill level of any drivers in the field are those that can race that hard and leave, leave each other room on top of that. So congratulations on your title. Another championship coming your way to add to that trophy shelf. Job well done. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kyle. Um, and 
But I, I do want to just address, I mean, this past week, I know it was, uh, you know, controversial and all that. Bittersweet for me, lots of mixed emotions there. Um, I know uh, what happened kind of uh, knocked death out of the playoffs. And, um, you know, I don't feel great about that. Uh, it's, that wasn't my intention at all. But um, anyways, so with all that being said, super happy with obviously with the championship. Tons of people to thank. Uh, I want to thank Kazikas Motorsports, NAI DeLeo Bram, Fame Construction, Flash Picks. Um, I definitely want to dedicate this season to uh, Dom's grandmother, who we lost uh, this season. Uh, shout out to her. We've been running her initials on our on our cars all, all season. So this season goes out to her. Uh, definitely want to thank my wife. She gives uh, or uh, she makes so many sacrifices back at home to let me do what I love here uh, to dedicate the time to do this. Uh, so shout out to her, to my family, my uh, my parents, uh, my neighbors who are, are huge supporters of me. Uh, gosh, who else? Um, uh, some friends of mine, Zach, Keller. Uh, they're huge supporters as well. Everyone, I'm sure I'm missing people, but thank you, everyone. You know who you are uh, for all your love and support. Appreciate it. Michael Curhan wins the Area Cup Series Season 5 Championship. Congratulations, Michael. We'll talk to you next time. Appreciate it, Kyle. Thank you so much. And, uh, and guys, shout out to you guys in the booth for bringing this uh, to life. You guys do an amazing job. You are absolutely top class. Appreciate it, Michael. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. All right, guys. Man, what a race, and that's only one of three this week, Vinny. And tomorrow night, the Area Truck Series does battle right here on the banks of Chicagoland Speedway, then the Florida State Builders Area Pro Series. Uh, if this was any indication, we were about to have a heck of a week here in Chicagoland. Yeah, I was going to say, you got a lot more action still yet to come. We got the trucks Tuesday night, and then the Pro Series Carter is coming on Thursday. But yeah, fantastic job from these guys, not only in this race all season long, some fantastic battles. And honestly, I can't wait to bring up the off, well, for at least for me, it's going to be the off season that's starting. Can't wait to come back for these guys at Daytona next season in season six. Well, the uh, commentator's curse did reach everyone except yeah. Michael Curran in the championship for got Matheson, got Connor Horn, uh, and then didn't really get Jake Nichols at the very end, but he didn't win it. But a phenomenal race all around. We had some rocky roads in the first half of the race, but second half, clean and green. I mean, that four wide move from Jake Nichols, that was just a, a thing of beauty, how all those guys didn't wreck and they kept it clean to the finish. They did it at Kansas. They did it again at Chicagoland. And in the end, Michael Curran completes the underdog story and he snags the championship here in season five of the Area Cup Series. Yeah, he stole one tonight and we could see a similar story tomorrow and Thursday. So make sure you tune in at 845 Eastern on Tuesday and Thursday. Of course, we've got other racing happening this week here on Sim TV as well. But that'll do it for the Area Cup Series for a little while. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you for the other championships tomorrow and Thursday. Kyle Heyer, Hunter Sleffy, and Finney Dakuna alongside you. And we'll see you next time.